Hey everybody, it is episode 100... Ah, I'm going to do that over. That's not enough episodes. No, no it's not. <laughs> we need to keep this now, keep going. Hey everybody, it's episode 201 of PodQuest. That's better. That's a few episodes. I'm trying to change it up because you yelled at me I for mean, saying the, too many. But like the whole joke isn't funny. I don't, f- like, I don't care. Like just don't make a comment about the number of episodes at all. I mean, I'm just gonna... It's July 4th. It 2018. is. 2018. America, fuck yeah. It's, it's kind of our birthday, I guess. It's the day we gained independence. I mean, it's the day that the declaration was signed, if I remember history correctly. Correct. But it's also the day we defeated the aliens. In 1996? I sure. think so. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's an important day in the United States. Anyway, I'm Chris. With me, as usual, are Walnut. Yeah, I'm, I'm right here. Druton. Hello. And I, I guess some stuff happened this week? Hey. I don't know. I didn't actually see a lot. That's because you don't pay attention. I do pay attention. No, you I don't. just don't. So, did you remember. hear about the the Sonic the Hedgehog casting? No, Jim Carrey, Doctor oh, Robotnik. I did hear. I did see that. That's right. I just forgot about it. Because you don't pay attention. I do. I saw it. I remember seeing it. I just forgot about it. Because you know, it's unimportant. Because that's just going to be a terrible casting. But it's a live action CG movie with Jim Carrey as the bad guy. I know. He was a good and, Grinch and a good well, um Jim. Jim Carrey is an amazing character actor, but I still just don't think him as Dr. Robotnik is a good call. Because Jim Carrey's too skinny. And I know they can do a fat suit and whatnot, but... Well, I mean, it's going to be live-action CGI, so they might have him all, like... I mean, look at the Grinch. Like, he had that big, fat Grinch belly. Uh, Yeah, but, I mean... And Robotnik's in a suit. It's not like he's sunbathing. What's that? Like, Robotnik wears a suit, and a lot of times... a lot of times in the games, anyway, you don't even actually see his body because he's in the um in like his different ships and all. Well, yeah, but it's, he's just he's got a round body with really skinny legs. So I mean, I guess in a fat suit, Jim Carrey could work, but still, like, look, I'm I'm just gonna throw this out there. It's been ten ten years since Tropic Thunder. Um, Tom Cruise looked like a fat man in that movie. It's true. He he was full. Uh, well, he had so many prosthetics; it was nuts. I know See, exactly. Like, I'm like just his saying. arms were three times the size of his actual arms. I'm just saying that was ten years ago. Yeah, and the dude looked completely unrecognizable. Oh yeah. Same thing. Um, fourteen years ago, Dodgeball. Um, Ben Stiller at the end looked like a fat guy. Yeah, I mean they're good with fat suits. And The Rock, like four years ago in Central Intelligence, mm-hmm. they made him look like a fat teenager. I still haven't watched that yet. I need to watch that. It was a- all right. Anything with The Rock and Kevin Hart is actually worth the two hours. Yeah. That it like it might not be the world's best movie, but you're going to laugh at least enough that makes the time and yeah. the money spent worth it. Yep. Yeah. Same thing. Like Jumanji was great. I, I want to watch. There was a weekend where Sarah and I rented Central Intelligence and Jumanji, not even realizing that we in- rented two The Rock and Kevin Hart movies, but we did, and so we had that double header. They, I'd say, and it was it was fun. They were both watchable. Since Fast Five, <clears throat> The Rock hasn't not made a bad movie, but he hasn't made an unwatchable movie. Yeah, like everything since Fast Five has at least been something that like you can sit down, watch, and be like that. W- I didn't just waste two hours of my life. Agreed. Even yeah. Baywatch. Baywatch, not very good, but had enough funny to it that it's like, that hour and, you know, I don't know, 40 minutes, like, I'm not disappointed that I, I wasted it. Basically, what you're saying is we're going to turn the name of this podcast into We Love The Rock and just talk all about The Rock. Okay. And Kevin Hart. And Kevin Hart. I wish, he, uh, man, he should have been Baywatch, too. That's it. Heart Rock, that's the name of the podcast. If no. only they did more together. Or or Rock Heart. I don't Though, know which one would work better. If right. you follow either of them on social media, um a lot like on Twitter, like they link to like Instagrams a lot. Yeah. And if you click on that, they're constantly commenting on each other's shit. I'm yeah. sure. And they're always mean to each other, but in that <laughs> like great way. Yeah. Like it's always like Kevin Hart will say something like snarky and the rock will literally tell him to go fuck himself. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, I don't think Jim Carrey is that bad of a choice for in a movie that is already going to be the epitome of a fucking dumpster fire. And, and that's that's my problem with it is like I love Jim Carrey, like I said, he's an amazing character actor, but it's just that movie is just going to be such a shit show. And as much as I love Sonic the Hedgehog, I have no interest in this movie whatsoever because it's going to completely tarnish whatsoever any Sonic the Hedgehog has already been tarnished. Oh, uh, I mean, Sonic look, the Hedgehog has been ruined since 1990. Yeah. 
2? And it's going to ruin it even more. 1992? That was when Sonic 2 came out. Exactly. Sonic 2 is the best of the Sonics. All right. Well, the, what I'm saying is that was the last good Sonic no. game. Sonic, Sonic and Knuckles wasn't bad. Sonic 3 and so, Sonic and Knuckles were so good. Sonic and Knuckles and Sonic 3 had... The, the artwork looked bad. Like, they... The game looked good, but it looked bad, if that makes sense. Yes. Like, it was like... The, the art style wasn't good. Mm. They, like, tried, they tried to make them too... They tried to make these 2D sprites look too 3D, because yeah. it, that was kind of like that era. Like, it was, mm-hmm. the, it was the end of the Genesis. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, like, I Sonic mean, Adventure were... 2 was yeah. a game. And <laughs> Sonic, Sonic Generations... Was a game also. And, th- I mean, there have been good Sonic games... It's just that well, it was, it's been... it was Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic Mania. And then, like, Sonic and Knuckles and Sonic 3 were all right. And then everything else was... They, well, Sonic Adventure They, they were games. I, I, will, I will confirm that everything from Sonic 3 until Sonic Mania was, in fact, a game. Sonic Adventure 2, I played the hell out of that game. Oh, I played it a lot, too. It doesn't mean it was good. It was, in fact, pretty bad, especially any time you had to play as Tails or Robotnik. Because I don't know about you. Maybe, maybe it's different for you. I don't play a Sonic game to run around in a shitty mech suit as Tails. Well, no, I mean there there were objects of that game that weren't good, just like any good game. But it's just that game overall was a in in my opinion was a fairly good, solid game. Like fairly, not saying it was fantastic, but I wouldn't say it was terrible. How long has it been since you played it? Uh, I don't remember. I played Sonic Adventure Two Battle for the GameCube. So it was so back in like the GameCube era, like yeah. you know, so like seventeen years, sixteen, I, seventeen. Years. I will say, like, if you went back to it now, like, it, you may have that nostalgia effect for it, where like you remember it, where you play it, and you you think you're having a better time with it than maybe you would if it was the first time you played it. That game didn't age well, though. I played it a couple of years uh, ago. Yeah, I mean, most games don't age well unless they're two D games. Yeah, I'm, look at Goldeneye. Look at how much we look fondly on Goldeneye. Goldeneye's not that bad. It aged terribly. Oh no, it though. did. But it's... you can't see anything in that game right now. That's yeah. that's literally all Nintendo sixty four games. Yeah, yeah. That that system, it's weird. So obviously, Nintendo sixty four more bits than the PlayStation. Like PlayStation was thirty two bit. Nintendo sixty four was sixty four bit. Technically, the Nintendo sixty four should have been more powerful. Those games aged like garbage compared oh, yeah. to like a good chunk of PlayStation One games. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because even like if you go back and play like the PS One like Final Fantasies, like the games themselves look pretty bad. Like Final Fantasy Seven, Eight, Nine actually doesn't look as bad just because it was a d- very different art style and it was kind of like the end of the generation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but Seven and Eight in particular, like the, the the they all like the world map characters and everything, they look bad. Like, yeah, sure. Final Fantasy VIII almost reminds me of Mortal Kombat. Like, yeah. it almost looks like they used live action mocap on people to like get the sprites in there. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if they did something they didn't. stupid like that. Um, but the cutscenes in those games actually still look pretty good. Yeah, like, oh yeah, not like obviously not as good as like just games look now. But you look at that, you're like, that's fucking impressive. That was almost thirty years ago. Yeah, <laughs> actually, no, twenty years ago. It was yeah. twenty years ago. Um, but yeah, that Sonic, Sonic Adventure 2, I'd say like two thirds of that game, pretty bad. I never liked the, um, the, the Knuckles Rouge levels or the Robotnik Tails levels. I thought the, the Sonic Shadow stuff where you were, you were actually just doing what you played a Sonic game for, like the running. Yeah. I always thought was all right. Um, but the other ones, I always hated them. Like they just weren't any fun. I didn't mind the, the, uh, Tails ones, the Rouge and Knuckles ones. I was, I was like... They were all the, always those shitty like puzzle platformers where you had to go like find the pieces of like a you, chaos emerald. You or were in one room and you had yeah. to find all the chaos emeralds or whatever, and it was just like some of these puzzle, not even puzzles, just some of these hidden locations were just so dumb that yeah, I would spend a half hour in it. But I mean, I, those parts I didn't really care about, but I didn't mind the the tails were botnik, and I loved the Sonic Shadow parts. Hell, even the end of the game was freaking awesome, where you're son- supersonic and hyper shadow fighting the giant monster in the space. It was so cool. So cool. I, I played the battle, like the two player, a lot in that. Oh, yeah. Like just the, the Sonic. The, the race, the race yeah. portion of the battle. Yeah. I mean, that that's probably the fondest memory I have is the, the two player, <laughs> which is yeah. fucking weird for me to say of all people. Yep. <laughs> um, but back to the whole Jim Carrey thing. He is leaps and bounds better. 
than the fact that they got fucking Cyclops for Sonic. Oh, God. And, like, I don't actually dislike James Marsden. Like, he's actually... Like, I've seen him in stuff where he's actually pretty good. Like, he's good in Westworld, and I've yeah. seen him in a few movies that he was good in. But if you're going to do a Sonic... To White. Exactly. Why? Why not Urkel? Yeah, like, you don't he needs need... a job. Yeah, like, he, he was just on that sitcom that got canceled after five episodes. Like... What sitcom? Uh, me, myself, and I. Okay. Um, it actually wasn't a bad show. Is, and that's the one where it's, like, the guy's life in different, like, yeah, so, old, middle, middle-aged and... Young. So his, like, present day is falling to pieces. Yeah. So you see, like, his present day where his best friend is Urkel. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then you see him as, like, a, like, middle school, like, early high schooler in the early 90s. Where, like, he's meeting Urkel as a kid and becoming, like, friends with him and everything like that. Yeah. And then you see himself, like, at retirement age in, like, his 60s. Yeah, right. I, re- I remember seeing ads for Joe. Yeah, and uh, honestly, like, the six episodes that actually aired weren't that bad. Like, like Erica and I were watching it, and it was it was usually enjoyable to watch. It's probably just on a bad time slot, that uh, Big Bang time slot or something like that. No, because it was actually on the same network. Okay. But then it's it wasn't pulling Big Bang numbers, so they got rid of it. I think that was a problem. I think it was on on like Tuesdays or something like that. Yeah. Like I think it was on one of those time slots where like Big Bang and like Young Sheldon were on two different nights, and then you had like Modern Family in the middle on ABC. Yeah. And I think this show was airing in that time slot on CBS. Yeah. So it's like you're not, you're not going to beat the two shows that have been on for a decade. Mm-hmm. with a, a new show. Like, if you yeah. want to compete, put the Big Bang Theory on the opposing time slot, see which one gets watched more. Yeah. Uh, anyway, enough Sonic and television stuff. Um, I think we kind of assumed this was going to happen. Um, Yvette Nicole Brown is replacing Hardwick for the Comic-Con panel for Walking Dead. Oh, I didn't... So didn't... We, we had... I don't remember if we talked about it on the show or if it was just talking, like, before we recorded or through text or whatever. But, like, after all that stuff went down last month and, like, they pulled talking with Chris Hardwick and he backed... And he, he, he like, pulled out of all the panels and everything, um, we, we kind of figured, like, the panels are obviously going to need a new moderator yeah. and that Talking Dead would end up having, like, a new person as the host. Yeah. And... Maybe it was maybe I said that she would probably be likely, or maybe you did. Just because... I honestly don't even remember this conversation at all. So I think you're making all this. Yeah, up. I don't. Maybe I had it with Erica then. Maybe yeah, possibly. Pro- probably. Just you and I were talking about like this whole thing after it happened, like before we recorded the one night. Yeah, like the three of us were talking about it a while, uh, like two weeks ago when it was news, and and I think you and I were talking about it before Drew even got here. I don't remember. Um. But yeah, so Yvette Nicole Brown is going to be doing the Comic Con panel for okay. Walking Dead. Now. I mean, she was a mega fan. So. Yeah, and she she is probably on like two or three episodes of the Talking Dead every season. Yeah, not counting the first and the last because the first and last are usually the uh, the big ones where they do it in like an amphitheater or whatever, like outside and have the entire cast there. Yeah, and she is usually like the audience correspondent. <laughs> yeah, like she's she's. Uh, I can see her being able to do that because she's such a big fan of the show that it makes sense to have her do it. She's a fan, and she also she interacts well with the other guests. Like she never she never dominates the conversation, and she seems to have a pretty good like rapport with a lot of the cast and um, crew. Yeah, that that's on there. Like anytime like that she's on the show with like the showrunners or the writers or the actors, she always has good interactions with them. Yeah. Um. So like that bodes well for at least the panel. I kind of expect that she'll end up taking over the show if something doesn't happen before, yeah, if... or no, because that show actually airs after Fear the Walking Dead too. So I think anyway, I think it airs after every Fear the Walking yeah, Dead it episode because they because Hardwick had Fear the Walking Dead uh, or Talking Fear and and Talking Dead. I think it was just Talking Dead for all. of Yeah, them. it was Talking. Dead. Okay, but then he also had his just his talking with Chris Hardwick show, which which was supposed to take place between the seasons. Cause I think that was um yeah, because it was supposed to air like in the break between yeah between halves of Fear, but that was just like a um like a a condensed version of the podcast, right? Like, didn't it they was, release it as the podcast later? He he released it as the podcast, but it wasn't a numbered episode it wasn't a numbered nerdist episode oh okay. it was just an episode like an extra thing it was just like a a nerdist extra or whatever i believe i can't remember if they listed it as a numbered episode but it was more of like a in case you missed it talking with whoever um yeah they they would release the audio but it was it 
it was kind of the podcast, but the way he said it, it was kind of a, a Comic Con esque type panel with uh, guest que- or with audience questions and and just talking with the guests. So yeah, it was both hard to really say, but um, yeah, it was it was supposed to just take place between the breaks and between the mid or midpoints of the actual seasons, just to have Chris Hardwick have even more work because he had all of the work in the industry. Yeah. With the podcast, the wall, talking, and I'm sure like oh, a I million... forgot he was doing that game show for a while too. Yeah. And then I'm sure a million other things. Do you know who Event Nicole Brown is? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure if you'd ever watched like community. No, I mean I've seen her on things, but I suggest watching Community if you've never have. It's a good show. I haven't. It's quite funny. It's got Donald Glover. Like if nothing else, he's really good. Joel McHale's actually pretty good too. Yeah. And Jim yeah. Jim Rash? I have, I don't know who that is. He's one of those guys where if you see him, you're like, oh, I've seen that guy and stuff. Okay. But I think he he's one of those, like, Second City or... Gotcha. Like, uh, popular improv group guys. Just, just find the Dungeons & Dragons episode and watch that, and I've then you'll be hooked. That. I, I mean, I watched the Dungeons & Dragons episode, that's it, and I, I need to watch the rest of it, but I hate commercials so much. Oh, is that only on Hulu? It's only on Hulu. So, t- take one month. Like, put, put a little extra money aside, sign up for Hulu without commercials, just for that one month, and just binge it. It's not that many episodes. I've actually thought about just upgrading, updating my Hulu to have no commercials, but I'm just, nah. I might do their whole Hulu TV thing with commercials. Um, don't. So, I'm not saying, like, don't get, like, a streaming TV. Um, the Hulu TV has less channels. Not less channels, but has less good channels than some of the others. And um, from what I've heard from a bunch of sources, the interface is a fucking disaster. Okay. Is the cat doing something? Drew, is the cat doing something? I, th- I think they're behind the thing there. Yeah. Something back there. But yeah, so I, I hear the, the Hulu live TV has... It, so it doesn't include Hulu. You still have to pay separate for your Hulu subscription. Really? Yeah, so it's 40 bucks for TV plus the like 8 or 9 for Hulu. So you're paying like 50 bucks for both of them. Okay. Um, But apparently the interface for live TV is absolutely horrendous like i've had people that i work with who like we work in technology that were like this is too complicated for me to want to deal with okay um i will say if you do want live tv again even if you just want it for like certain things here and there youtube tv real nice is it yeah um i did a free week of it um last week because we're as soon as we clear our dvr off we're getting rid of comcast because they just keep fucking things up yeah yeah um, well, at least as rid of as I can. I have to keep internet because they don't offer Fios in my area. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we did a trial of YouTube TV and the interface is good. Um, it's got all of the channels that we watch except for Food Network. Um, which I'm just going to get like logins for my parents, um, account when they, which they're going to switch cable providers soon too. This way most, I can. I believe most Food Network shows you can watch the day after on Hulu. Um, Food Network Star doesn't appear to go up on Hulu. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, and that is, like, the one show on Food Network that we watch every year. Okay. So, like, I only re- like, it'll, it'll be nice to be able to just turn on Food Network if we want to, like, through the app. Because they, they do the same thing that a lot of companies do, where you download their mobile app, sign in with a cable account, and you can just Chromecast it to your TV. Yeah. Um, but, like, that is the one thing we watch every year, and if we cancel it this month, we're gonna miss, like, the end of the season, basically. That makes sense. That sucks. Uh, but yeah, the, otherwise, the YouTube TV, it's got like AMC, all your local networks, tons of sports channels. Yeah. Um, it actually comes with the MLB network, too. Awesome. I need to get my baseball in, especially um, with the Phillies playing so good. Doesn't come with NFL because they, I'm sure the NFL makes way too much money off of that to ever give it out for free. Yeah. Um, Drew, I'm sure you can. <laughs> yeah, also they have like w- a weird deal with Verizon over mobile oh. access to, to NFL content at all. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, but yeah, it's uh, it it was actually really cool, and it gives you like you can actually see what. So when you're going through the guide for something, um, it, even on your phone, if you're just scrolling through it, it'll show you the stuff, and as you scroll to it, it'll actually put that thing at the top of the screen. So if it's like a movie, you can see where in the movie it's at before you turn it on. Thanks. So th- yeah, rather than like now, where like if you're looking through like the guide, you'll see like oh, the movie started you know 30 minutes ago. I've seen this before. What part is that? Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I like. I have to it. look into that. I had PlayStation View for about a week, and that was nice. Yeah, hey, I heard and, that that one's good too. And I have uh, friends who have PlayStation View strictly and not 
cable, and they like it too. And I'm just like, I, I don't really know if I need the cable right now. Like, I'm I'm fine with watching uh, The Office for the umpteenth time just to have as background noise. I don't need cable, but I do miss having sports. Yeah. I So what you could do, and this is probably what we'll do, is like we'll sign up for it, and then when we don't have stuff to watch, we'll cancel it because yeah. it retains your um, your settings. So it doesn't necessarily retain like your DVR, but any shows that you had saved, like like um, to record, it'll save all that. So you don't have to go in and like reprioritize every time. Okay. So this way, you know, if you only turn it on while Walking Dead's on, let's say, not that that's what you would do it for, yeah. but it'll still it'll record Walking Dead for you every week, even after you've had it canceled for four months. Okay. Yeah. Um, I do have a show later on to tell you about that you'll probably want to watch on Netflix. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, although I'll say like. If you're thinking about honestly any of these for local sports, you're shit out of luck. Oh, it was uh, there. PlayStation View. You're supposed to be able to get all local sports. But, YouTube um, TV look like it did too. Cause you I, get Comcast Sportsnet and the Comcast Network. I because so. I'm gonna bet you don't. So I was constantly getting told that I could watch the Phillies games every day. Well, yeah, that's the thing. I I don't really care for hockey. And that's where ho- that's where the Flyers all, are played. That's where literally all the only one that's not exclusively on those two channels is the Eagles. Yeah, and they're on Fox, so you'll be able to watch the Eagles, no problem. But there was this year, this season, the first game of the season, there was issues. Really? And yeah, he had to go through. He had to go to the Fox Sports app and log in via his PlayStation View login. To get to Fox Sports to watch the fi- the Eagles game for C- for so game one, at least he could still do yeah. it without paying extra. Yeah. But yeah, Drew, I was actually every day that there was a Phillies game, I was getting a little alert on my phone telling me that the Phillies were playing and I could watch it. Interesting. So yeah, <laughs> um, let's see what is next on the list. Oh, so the the producers that are doing it, the the remake of it with the clown and yeah. Stephen King, ah, uh, scary. Um, <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, scary. scary. Uh, they're working, apparently, on a Chucky remake. Okay. So there's going to be, like, a new Child's Play movie that's not going to, hopefully, not be the stupid camp that that series has turned into. I mean, that would be, because, I mean, yeah, that'd be pretty cool, like, have it rebooted because I'm tired of seeing Chucky all, like, scarred up and everything. Like, he needs to be a new toy again. And well, pl- like... So, last Hollow, I think it was this past Halloween, we actually watched the original Child's Play. Don't play with a bag while we're recording. It was getting on my nerves. <laughs> so I, I didn't think about that until I started to fix it. I was like, shit. Uh, we watched the original Child's Play, and it was, like, suspenseful creepy. Like, it wasn't, like, a, a shock horror movie, but m- it, it still had much more of, like, that frightening feel than any of the recent ones do. Yeah. Like, the recent ones are more comedy than anything. Yeah. Yeah, I I haven't really watched them, so I don't really have much to say about them. Oh, that's, that's surprising. Just... I thought you would have seen at least some of them. No, I've I like I'm not big right. in horror, but I will I'll watch it. But I'm kind of a little bitch and kind of need people around me to watch it. I forgot that you didn't like horror movies. It's not that I don't like them; I'm just not big ones. There's a difference. Because as you just said, you're a little bitch. I'm a little bitch, and I get scared easily. Drew, have you seen those movies? No, you don't really watch a lot of horror movies, right? Nope. And you guys are both fucking broken on the inside. I, I don't find them good or entertaining. Because you're broken on the inside. He watches wrestling, but doesn't think horror movies are entertaining. The thing that even as a wrestling fan, you admit <laughs> is not good or entertaining. But he doesn't watch horror movies because he doesn't find them good or entertaining. I don't know. I saw something. Somebody posted it on Facebook of uh, of an Asian wrestler being beat by a man with a mustache with the guy's penis. And that made me never want to watch another wrestling thing ever again. Man, that's old, man. <laughs> I've never seen it before. I don't Famous watch Dick that wrestler shit. Joey Ryan. He's dead now. Really? No. Oh. <laughs> that all sounded plausible, though. Like, was that, is that name all true? Joey like, Ryan is his name. He, and he is he looks the famous like a, Dick Wrestler? Uh, I mean, yes, but no. Like, I've heard Dan talk about him on yeah. like back when he was on the Bombcast stuff. Mm-hmm. I didn't know who the, who it was. It was literally just the clip. And I, I saw it. And I'm just like, this is the dumbest thing I have ever seen. Listen, there's an even dumber clip where there's like a chain. One guy is grabbing Joey Ryan's penis. And then like eight guys are all like 
holding on to that guy's shoulders, and they all get flipped. That's how strong Joey Ryan's penis. Jesus Christ. All right, next. Wrestling is good. Shut up. <laughs> no. What's no, the current state of the WWE? F, fucking whatever terrible. It is. There we go. Vin, well, so, Vin yeah. Man is putting all of his time and effort into the XFL reboot. Exactly. Um, Halo TV series officially happening at Showtime in 2019. Okay, I did see that. After what is it? Five years ago, it was announced in as part of the um, Xbox TV TV Sports TV games. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, finally happening on Showtime. You said? Yeah, on Showtime. Oh, great! A uh, a, a cable network that no one has because nobody cares about Showtime. Um, Showtime there's... has a few other shows, though. Like, that's where, um, oh, what was that Neil Gaiman show that just happened, like, two years ago? Um, Gods and S- American Gods. Mm-hmm. American Gods was a Showtime show that uh, people apparently liked a whole bunch. Yeah, but. Yeah, I mean, I don't have Showtime. <laughs> yeah, no one has Showtime. You can add it to your YouTube TV subscription for, like, five bucks. <laughs> I don't want to, no. Because no one cares about, and Showtime never had any good movies on or anything either. Like, my parents, when my brother worked at Comcast, because we could, we had everything. The only thing we had to pay extra for was Red Zone. So, that's what they did. They paid the extra ten bucks for Red Zone, but they got everything for free. So, uh we had Showtime, and nothing good was ever on Showtime. And there was like 13 Showtime channels, nothing good was ever on. And then late at night, you would watch Cinemax anyway, so there's no point having anything other than HBO and Cinemax. So I guess we know what you did a whole bunch. A little bit. Uh, but, I mean, this isn't going to be good either. It's a fucking Halo TV series. It's going to be garbage. Yeah, but... Unless, unless it is an actual live-action version of I Love Bees. Okay. You know, I don't think I've ever actually seen I Love Bees. Um, that, that It gets brought up. It used to get brought up quite frequently, and I just think I never watched it. Well, so I mean, it was all it it was all audio files. So it was the the ARG where like people were finding like actual caches of things like in the country. Yeah. And then as they as certain milestones got unlocked, audio files were unlocked, and okay. it was basically like a radio drama. Okay. Um, about Spartans and these like kids that were breaking into this facility to, and found out that like they were full of bad things. Oh. And you didn't nest like you knew it was related to Halo because the I Love Bees thing flashed at the um flashed during the movie trailer. Like like Halo Two had a movie trailer at one point, like yeah. in theaters. And the I want to say it was like the Xbox or the Halo thing at the bottom of the screen flashed from like Xbox dot com to I Love Bees dot com. Yeah. And then like you go to the website and you find out the website's been hacked. And this girl is trying to help her grandmother's B website get unhacked. It was fucking weird. Yeah, but that's Microsoft. Yeah, that's what they do. That's what it, that's what the times were back then. There was these also that yeah. viral marketing schemes. Like I remember after Cloverfield, uh, the first Cloverfield movie, there was like a big viral marketing scheme for like the Cloverfield stuff uh, with um, Five Gum. And right, like, I remember that too. I got into it. I got big into it. But you needed to buy gum, Five Gum, and I don't like gum, so. I never, I never got further into it. I was like, this sucks. Who doesn't like gum? I'm just not a big fan of chewing without swallowing. You uh, can swallow gum. But it takes seven years to get from the mouth to the butt. I mean... I don't think that's true. No, no. it's not. It's... Anyway. Uh, yeah, so Halo is going to have a show on Showtime. Yeah. Cool. Um, I did see... There was another article I saw someplace where they mentioned that it might... It might involve some of the live action trailers that Halo has had over the years. Interesting. Do you know how like there'll be those live action trailers that really have nothing to do with the games e- yeah. ever? Yeah. Like every trailer they've ever done with Halo. Yeah. Hopefully if hopefully whatever this is, they they don't just try and tell like the story of Master Chief and they maybe do like like a reach or like an ODST like, you know, it's in that world, mm-hmm. but they're not following Master Chief around cuz yeah. I feel like that just wouldn't go well. Cause, like that yeah. character's kind of cool, no, but he's cool because it's the player cat. He's like the silent protagonist for the most part. It's gonna have to be like a like a pre Reach before Reach got destroyed, and like the creation of the Spartans and stuff like that. I mean, best case scenario, they get Nathan Fillion for it. He already voices characters in the game. Yeah, who I knows? Mean, I'm pretty sure he's still going good with Castle. So, or is Castle over? Castle ended like two years ago, buddy. <laughs> Castle's ended like seven times, he, though. So. He got a new show where this time he is the cop. 
Oh, right. I forgot about that. I want to watch that show. He's like a 45-year-old rookie. I want to watch I think it's called The Rookie or something. It is. Yeah, I, I want to watch that show. Uh, let's see. What is next? I don't... I don't know if either of you guys care about this, but um, we finally found out when It's Always Sunny is coming back. Oh, I didn't know it wasn't <coughs> on or out and was coming back if it had been. It took like a, an extended hiatus between the the last season that aired and this one. Okay. Um, I think last season, so it the last several years it's been airing in like January. Okay. So they took like a year and a half off this time, Um, but it's the, ne- the new season's coming back on September 5th. Yeah. And it's... Dennis isn't going to be there. Because I don't know if you guys saw last season, Dennis found out that he had a child in, like, North Dakota. I think, yeah, North Dakota. So he decides at the end of the season, fuck all this nonsense, I'm moving to North Dakota to be a father. Yeah. And that's how the season ended, with him just moving to North Dakota yeah. to be a father. Because they, um, Preston and Steve interviewed, uh, Mac. Yeah. Um. All, he's always on. Yeah. He's, he's from the area. Yeah, he loves, he loves him. That's, but they interviewed Mac about it, and he's like, look, as long as we keep finding this fun... We're going to keep doing it, even if we have to take these extended breaks. Um, and, well, uh, like, Dennis was just, he was like, he, not that he had enough, it's just like, he's, he's done. He's, he's had his fill. But so, he'll come back if, if they need him or they want him to. But. I mean, there, there were already set photos where he is in at least, he's been on set. So, yeah. like, he is still involved with the show, whether he's actually appearing on it. Cause, um, the, like, the three male leads are all, like, they write most of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but a lot of that cast has been doing other stuff. Like Charlie Day has been in a bunch of movies. Like yeah. he, he was in both. Not that this affected the season, but he was in both Pacific Rims. He was in um those horrible boss movies. Yeah, he's um Caitlin Olsen uh had her show on Fox, The Mick. The Mick that unfortunately got canceled, but was actually a really good show. Yeah, and uh, Glenn Howerton, um, who is Dennis. He has a show AP Bio on NBC. Is that still going? Yeah, it, it didn't okay. get canceled, and it's actually pretty good. Yeah. He is the worst biology teacher in oh. the world. I think that's <laughs> the point of the show. Yeah. But, like, he's not even a bio teacher. He's a philo- he's a philosophy scholar. Like, he has a PhD in philosophy. Oh, jeez. He got fired from, like, Harvard or something. Somehow got hired in, like, his hometown as the AP Bio teacher. Okay. Refuses to teach the kids biology. Like, just straight up refuses to do it. Made them on the first day throw all of their books out the window. <laughs> and then, like, there was one random episode where he, like, pulled out a bunch of biology knowledge and all the students were just staring at him. He's like, what? I never said he didn't know biology. I just won't teach it. <laughs> yeah. It's a good show, though. And, yeah. like, he is very much still the Dennis character in it. Like, just a smarter, less scumbag yeah. Dennis. But still, like, a, a bad person. Yeah. Um, but has not been addicted to crack cocaine the way Dennis has. Twice. I think it's been more than twice, actually. I, know, I, I only remember because there was the one episode that they repeated that entire original episode. Like, right. So I know I know at least twice. Well, because there, there's the episode when Mac was fat also. Oh, there was a Fat Mac episode where he was addicted? So not the, not where he was actually doing it, but there was the episode, it was the episode where Mac was carrying around the bag full of chimichangas. Oh, right. And he was like, don't you ever just want to do things that are unhealthy for you? He's like, I miss crack. Yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah. Like Mac literally asked him something like that. It's like, like, what is one thing that's bad for you that you really want to do? And he's like, crack. I want to do crack right now. Yeah, I remember that. As now. Mac is just shooting himself full of syringes of insulin. Yeah. Like, not, he's just taking full syringes and just shoving them into his stomach and injecting them. It's great. I love that show. <laughs> show's so stupid. Um, uh, they also announced that that Mayans, um, spinoff from Sons of Anarchy is gonna be airing. Yes. I, I think d- in September also. I did hear about that. I, I care less about that. Like, Sons of Anarchy was a cool show, but I'm, I'm excited for Always Sunny to be back. Yeah. Uh, remember a couple of weeks ago we were talking about, um, Disney movies and that Planes franchise and how it was a spinoff oh, of right. Cars and everything. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, that studio's closed. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, Disney boy. has closed Disney Toon, which they did most of the shitty sequels, like The Return of Jafar and okay. Prince of Thieves and, and all like that those, stuff. Those made for... Uh, the direct or Or VHS. Yeah. Yeah. They did like those movies and they did the Planes movies. Yeah. There's no longer a... Like... A any room for those types of things like anything like that's going to go directly to netflix and they probably well 
I was about to say, they're about to just make their own streaming service yeah. that would have had all the time and space for that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's sort of the weird part, which makes me wonder if they are going to open up a new studio that focuses on that streaming service content as opposed to... Because, like, even... These are not Pixar-level movies and stuff, but, you know, I'm sure the animation process for that sort of stuff still takes a long time. Yeah, oh, sure. Um, But who knows? I mean... I don't think Disney has had any of those straight to DVD shit sequels in a while. Like no, I don't no, think they, they've been doing them. And that's that's probably the other reason why they shut them down. Is like there's nothing, no market for them. Well, like the the market now is the streaming binging shows. Yeah, and I know at one point in I want to say it was like the mid 2000s when Steve Jobs became like in charge of Disney basically by being the majority shareholder. Um, I remember hearing a rumor that. He basically told, like, decreed that they weren't doing any more sequels unless there was, like, a reason. Yeah. That's why, like, Pixar has done sequels, but hasn't, like, other than the Cars sequel, none of their sequels have been garbage direct to, like, DVD movies. Yeah. Um, and they stopped doing all of the Disney direct to DVD stuff. Yeah. But I don't know if that was ever true. It just, it seemed to, it seemed it because it kind of coincided mm-hmm. with the timing and all. Yeah. Ah, uh, there's a, did you guys see the, the, poster for glass no i i you know what tried, it is i tried to look at it but it didn't load on my phone and i then i forgot to look at it do you guys is that the that's the new m night shaman okay. Lama Lama yeah. movie the unbreakable sequel yeah, yeah. Well, unbreakable slash split sequel oh right right it is tied in with that. still haven't yeah. seen split yet neither have i but i know like basically know the ending but i still haven't seen i don't it. know anything about it okay um and I, honestly like I think this poster looks really cool, but I don't really like Unbreakable. So I don't really care about this movie so much, but I heard Split was really good. How how did you, how do you not like Unbreakable? Um I don't really like any M Night Shyamalan movies other than like The Sixth Sense was good the first time I saw it. That's the only M Night Shyamalan movie I've ever seen. Like I didn't like That's Lady in the sense. Water, The Village, I was super disappointed with the way it ended. Um cuz that twist was super dumb. Um Signs actually I at the time, I really didn't like Signs, but looking back on it years later, it was actually pretty good. It was dumb the way, like, the solution, but at the same time, like, that was actually kind of a clever solution. But yeah, all of his other movies, I fucking hate. And Unbreakable, I just found super boring. But the uh, the poster for this, it looks like they're all in an insane asylum. So you have, it's just like, from the neck down of Samuel L. Jackson, James McAvoy, and Bruce Willis. Um, Samuel L. Jackson's in, in a, uh, oh yeah, there you go. So Sam Jackson's in a wheelchair with like the blanket over him. Um, you can't really see it because of the way the picture that Rich just threw up is being cut off. I don't know. Can you s- scroll it the other way so you can see like the top of them better? That's, oh wait, here we go. Or that's, that's, okay. that, that is that's, the poster. Yeah. yeah. So you, you had the tops of the, of it cut off by the banner on top of the, oh, okay. the image. I didn't notice. So if you pay attention, um, Bruce Willis on the far right, he is chained to the floor. Yep. yep. Um, and then McAvoy in the middle just looks weird and uncomfortable with the whole situation. But then, like, you know, they look kind of cool in their reflections. Well, yeah, I mean, that's because that's... I, I You don't know anything about Split, so I don't want to say anything about it. But that's... I mean... It's that's their characters in these movies. It's glasses. Uh, 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 why why are names terrible for me right now? Um, Sam Jackson. He's a very breakable guy. Oh no, and, I, like, I I I remember Unbreakable. Like yeah. Samuel Jackson has that disease where like the slightest injury could be fatal. Yeah, the like, slightest it, impact will shatter yeah. his bones. Yeah, like if he like stubs his toe, there's a good chance his toe is just going to break into pieces. Yeah. And then Bruce Willis is unbreakable. Yeah, he's literally unbreakable. And then, so it makes sense to have him chained to the floor. And I mean, that's that's a cool looking poster. Like, yeah, that's, like as far as posters go, I think that's actually kind of cool looking. Um, and I do like James McAvoy. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm gonna try to watch Split within the next couple of days. I've been thinking about that too, but I know like a Quiet Place comes out soon, and I really want to see that still. Well, I already seen it, so I haven't. I haven't. Well, it was all right. I liked it. I liked it a lot. You know what? You don't like scary movies. Your opinion doesn't matter, Mister Penis Rustling it's... Fan. <laughs> He's uh... got a point. <laughs> He's got a point. So Amazon Prime Day is coming soon. I don't have Prime, so 
How how do you live in 2018 and not have Prime? I I canceled it right before it was going to charge me a hundred dollars, and I had two dollars in my bank account. You need you need credit cards, my friend. <laughs> this is probably the last year we're going to have Prime. To be honest, I use it so much that I'll pro and like I'll probably still renew it because like I I get the hundred and twenty dollars worth out of it in a year. We'll see. Like, like that's that's kind of like I don't like going to the store. Like I yeah. hate shopping in person because they never. Ha- it's always a hassle to just find what I want. Yes, like, that's my problem. Like, everybody knows I'm, like, I'm always strapped for cash. I don't really have the money, so I don't go shopping. So ha- paying $100, $100 or $120 or whatever it is for a year to get free sh- free two-day shipping or whatever, I'm like, well, I don't really use that that often. I mean, I do, I did use Amazon Video for a while, but I don't need it anymore. Like, yeah. I don't, re- I didn't really need it then. Yeah, like, we use the video fairly often, like, we at least do like a movie a month off of there. Um, and like, you know, those movies are like $5 to rent. So, I mean, that's not a ton of money, but it still adds up over time. And plus just the amount of stuff that I purchase. Like I had to, for work, I had to go to a micro center, which I don't know if you guys have ever been to. Um, it's like if Best Buy and Radio Shack had a baby that didn't suck. <laughs> yeah. Um, like they sell everything. You can actually go in there and buy gaming PCs like pre-built. Cool. Yeah. Um, but I had to get, there's one near my one client and I had to go out there because I needed an adapter because the mm-hmm. docking station never showed up for the laptop that we ordered. And I just, it was just an HDMI to USB is all I needed. I looked all over like the aisle that has all the monitor adapters and everything. Not there. I asked three different employees. None of them knew where it was. And then I finally stumbled across it on like the, with the hard drives for some reason. Like it was in the same aisle as the hard drives. There were like, f- like, I don't know, a dozen different, like, adapters for that sort of thing, like USB to, Weird. like, display adapters. Like, why is this over here, and why does nobody in this fucking store know it? And, like, it was also 15 more dollars than it would have been if I could have just ordered it off of Amazon. Oh, well, yeah. Even, I could have... So, if they could have guaranteed it delivered by end of business day, I literally could have just ordered it same day and still had it less expensive than it was at the store. Yeah. But obviously, they they don't guarantee by end of business. They guarantee by like nine o'clock or eight, something. Eight, nine o'clock, yeah. Uh, and like that sucks. But yeah, I will totally keep paying for Prime as long as it's if as long as I'm using it. If I had the extra money, I would. But like I said, I don't really shop that often. Like I haven't bought myself anything new in a while. So except for food, you gotta treat yourself. I'm planning on it at the end of the summer when I actually should have spare money. Hookers and blow. Probably less hookers, more blow. Probably yeah, it might be the other way around. I haven't decided yet. You, look, you don't need that much blow if you've never done it before. I, <laughs> true, but I don't know how much I'm going to enjoy it, so I might need extra so I can keep doing it. Anyway, uh, Prime Day going to be on the 16th to the 17th, obviously because it's a full day. Um, have you 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 said you have Prime still? Yep. Uh, and actually, like you had just mentioned earlier, like there's all those free games they're giving away. Yeah, like. That's kind of cool if you have a PC to play games. Mm-hmm. But uh, have you ever paid attention to like the Prime Day deals? Uh, yes, but it's like always, and it is again this year at a time in between paychecks where nice, like I I I won't have money for anything, and nothing's ever been that good that I've been like, oh, I need to make sure I keep money aside. Yeah, that, that's what I was gonna say. Like every year, it's. Every year it's all, it's weird. There's there's like a handful of things that are like, okay, that's actually a good deal or like that's something that like would be n- nice to own but never I'm buying that cuz it'll never be that cheap again. Yeah. And a lot of it ends up just being the Amazon products. Mm-hmm. So like your Fire Sticks, your tablets, your Kindles, your Echoes, all that sort of thing. Yeah. Like there's not a whole lot of like video games on sale or peripherals or cool shit that I would actually find useful. Uh but at least you know, it's cool that they keep doing it. Uh, moving on from there, there is a new Firefly series that got announced. A comic book series. Okay. Cool. Before. Oh, okay. Um, but it's going to take place during the, um, like that Civil War thing. Okay. Like the Brown Coats versus the, the Alliance or sure. whatever they were considered. Yeah. Um, the War of Unification. That's what it was called. Yeah. Um, and it's actually being written by, like, a good writer, uh, Greg Pak, is doing it, who he did the original um, Planet Hulk and World War Hulk storylines. Okay. Which are probably some of the best Hulk stories in the last 20 years. Uh, 
Yeah, so it's going to focus on on the War of Unification with, um, you know, like um, Mal and, and Zoe were part of the Browncoats. Like that's yeah, where, that's where they met each other, I believe. Well, that'll I'm excited to see that then because I always wanted to hear more about that the Civil War and whatnot rather than everything beyond. But I do want to know more beyond. But I do want to know the precursor and all that stuff. Too. Yeah, like this is one of those things where I've never been super interested in the Firefly, like because there's a bunch of comic books for Firefly that have been coming out since the show ended, basically. Yeah. Um, and like, I've always been like peripherally like, oh yeah, th- that seems cool. Like maybe someday I'll buy and or read those. But this is the first one where it's like, oh, that's actually pretty cool. Like seeing this stuff would actually be way cooler than just stuff that I'm disappointed never made it into a show. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's hard to watch to, for me, it would be hard to read a Firefly comic that takes place after the series because it's just going to have a different aesthetic to it with, uh, I can't remember Summer Glau's character's name. River. River. Like, with River being all, like, awesome, epic, super soldiery. But being, like, a war thing is going to be a different story because there's not, like, there's not a lot of, probably not going to be a lot of, like, hand-to-hand combat kung fu stuff going on. It's going to be shooting guns and diplomacy. Exactly. And that's something that'll translate better in comics than a, like, a, a, a kung fu thing that stuff with River would be. And, like, we don't, we also don't know how much of, like, other... Ca- like, obviously, like, at this point, I don't think River would have even been born yet. No, she won't. Know. Or if she was, she'd be, like, a very young child. Yeah. So I don't... I don't know... and I don't know if they ever mentioned it in the series how long ago that war was. I don't think they did. No. Um. But, yeah, you're probably not going to see, like, River or Simon or Book. You might see, like, Book as, like, an ancillary character, like, popping up for some reason but not as like a main character in the story yeah, yeah um kaylee probably won't be in it uh i don't know if wash would be or not uh because I, I got maybe? the impre- i got the impression like him and zoe didn't meet until after all of that yeah but you never know yeah like they him and wash probably didn't meet till they bought serenity because wash is the the pilot to serenity yeah so they didn't need a pilot during the war it would make sense. Unless he was a pilot for the Browncoats. I can't remember. There was one episode in Firefly where they talk about them buying Serenity. just can't remember if Wash was in the flashbacks or not. Yeah, I don't remember exactly myself either. Um, so, moving on, though. Google is, reper- is reportedly working on gaming streaming services and hardware. Okay. Which, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Because uh, it's been... It's been almost 20 years since a major company entered, like, the gaming fray. Yeah. Because, like, there have been those small ones, like, you had, like, the Oya that came out for, like, a week and then fucking mm-hmm. crashed and burned. Uh, but it hasn't been since since Microsoft came out with the Xbox that we've had, like, you know, a new combatant enter the ring. Yeah. So, like, having somebody else to kind of square off with Sony and Microsoft in particular, like, that could be interesting. It could I, be. It we'll could see what be. Happens. I don't want it. Why not? I don't. I don't want. I don't want this competition already because then it just means it's another system I'm gonna have to buy and not use. Well, then just don't buy it. But I might use it. <clears throat> okay, let's look at it this way. When was the last time you turned your Xbox One on? Exactly. Yeah. So don't buy anything new. But then, what if I need it? You you don't wait until it's end. Wait until the end of the cycle. Buy it and then play those games. But then or wait what till about you find out games? if you need it. What about the new games? We, you, Play them on PS4 or PC. Well, the, and and that's that's my issue. It's like there's so much others that I don't think anything Google related is going to go big because everyone's gonna be like, well, I've got a PS4 or maybe PS5 at that time, and I got a Xbox Two at the time. So I I don't I don't need a Google thing because that's just gonna be a completely different thing that. It's pointless because yeah. everything else is coming out on this stuff now. What's so um the report from Kotaku about this whole thing says that they're developing some sort of streaming platform for it and that they're hoping to offload the rendering of graphics to something like in the cloud basically. Mm-hmm. So that a wider range of like PC platforms could potentially play the games, which that would actually be kind of cool assuming assuming they can make it work well with the streaming service, being able to say play What's like a a good third party game that would be fun on PC? 
uh, The Witcher 3. Or, I mean, Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk 20, 2077. 20, so, like, being able to stream that to, like, a P- like to one of your PCs, which are, like, six, seven years old now, because, mm-hmm. like, realistically, neither of you could probably play that game even on, like, minimal settings with nope. your computers. Nope. Yeah. But, like, if all of the hard stuff is being rendered off-site and it's just streaming down to you and it's based on your bandwidth, that could actually be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Depending on how it performs anyway. Yeah. But then they've also been trying to gather development studios, or at least get development studios kind of on a list of interest for it. So they were approaching people at GDC this past year, trying to, like, gauge interest on, like, who'd be willing to work on stuff. So... Okay. Like, they're... They are deep in... It. This isn't just, like, something leaked that they were, like, potentially, like, brainstorming an idea. They've actually been doing legwork for it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um... So, Shenmue 3, remember that game got kickstarted like 7, 8, 9, 12 years ago, something like that? Yeah. I think it got kickstarted in like 1989 or something? Probably. Uh, probably like 1952. Um, when was that? Was that 2016? Th- th- yes. Three E3s ago, I think. I'm actually, I'm, I'm scanning the articles because sometimes it'll say like, Shenmue 3, blah, 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 kickstarted, you know, such and such. Uh, it doesn't though. It just points out that it's been pushed, it's been delayed twice already. Um... It's going to require at least 100 gigs of space on a PC. Jesus Christ. Which is more than double a game like The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3 was 45 gigs. That's just... That's obnoxious. Yeah, which that either means this game is huge, like, worldwide, or they're doing a really bad job of developing it and compressing, like, data. Yeah. Man, you guys are both assholes on your phones right now. No, I'm, I'm actually on the Shenmue 3 Kickstarter I'm, I'm, trying to I'm find joking. it. Okay, come on I, now. I, I'm, and I was trying to look up. I'm pretty sure Final Fantasy 15 on PC is over 110 gigs. Really? Yes. Uh, I'm trying to confirm that, but I vaguely remember <laughs> seeing that be like, oh, th- this game is fucking obnoxious big. That sounds right, because that game... Between all the cinematics in that game and just how open it was. This is amazing. So, I'm on the Shenmue 3 Kickstarter. Uh, the pledge $5 or more. Shenmue lives. Uh, uh, be able to participate in surveys and vote in polls for ideas that you want to see in-game. Estimated delivery date, August 2015. So, did this launch in 2015? Digital so- copy, estimated delivery date, December 2017. So yeah, their Kickstarter so, launched in 2015. Okay, so yeah, yeah the Kickstarter was well, June 2015. Four ago then. Yeah, and, so they launched it at yeah. e- at E3. Yeah. And yes, Final Fantasy 15 on PC, minimum requirement of hard drive space, 100 gigabytes. That's, that's absurd. Nuts. Like that's just I mean, I've got a terabyte, but that that I but when it's I one tenth of your Yeah, like that's a tenth. Listen, of that. this is not a math podcast. This is a Kevin Hart and the Rock podcast. It, you keep your fractions out of it. <laughs> this is Heart Rock or Rock Heart. We haven't figured it out yet. Or Kev Rock. I don't know. You're bad at this. Let's I, um, You keep going like this to me, like it'd be something I'd be interested in. So yeah, because kind Drew, of interested. We all know Drew doesn't care about any of this. Yeah, pretty much. Um, that that Jump Force game, the one where you get to fight Naruto with. Frieza. Oh yeah, yeah, Dragon. yeah. Uh, three Bleach characters have been announced. Okay. Uh, Ichigo, Aizen, and Rukia. Okay, I can I can see that. Why not any of the other cool characters though? Why not Chad? I want to fucking fight those guys as Chad with the two big fucking demon arms. I mean, yes, eventually Having... DLC, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll that's true. definitely be DLC. But listen, they they're gonna milk the fuck out of that game. So, so uh, you never watched Bleach, right? I watched a little bit. So for most of the run, um, at least most of like the canon run, like not counting like the filler and stuff, and after the Eisen fight, because I don't think that's that... all canon. The only thing that's not canon are the fillers. It, but even what they ended with is canon to the manga. Is it? Yeah. I thought everything after the Eisen fight, they had caught up to the manga, so it was like its own, like the, um, what was, um, Ishta's thing called? The Quincy? Quincy, yeah. Like, isn't that what the second, the, 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 Quincy, the last the arc Quincy was? The Quincy War is the last arc. Yeah. But the arc before that, which is Ichigo getting his powers back. That is a legitimate oh, is it? thing, yeah. And is the Quincy War also? The Quincy War, it's not in the series, but that is in the manga. It's, oh, so that th- never so, made it into the anime. So, yeah, no, it never made it into the anime. The anime ended before the Quincy War. Okay. Um, I thought that was like, part of the, the anime. Like, there were fillers that 
weren't part of the manga. Like, immediately after the Aizen stuff with the the dolls, the fake people, that was filler. Um, a Wait, lo- did they do that again after the final Aizen arc, or after the first Aizen arc? After the first Aizen arc. Okay, yeah, with the um, the artificial soul things. And- yeah, that was, that was all filler. That was not canon. There was bunch of stuff where they would go mid season like mid arc into into yeah, it was, like a couple episodes like into like 10 episodes of filler it was of the a completely worst. side story and a lot of that is not canon i, I knew all of that but, for some yeah, reason i thought after i thought that it had done that thing where it had caught up with the manga by the time they defeated aizen in like episode 200 no yeah and there was there was an arc immediately after that that uh ichigo somehow got his um, Soul Reaper abilities back temporarily. That's not canon, but there was an arc after that that was canon. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, so I'll, I only watched it up until they beat Aizen. Yeah. Just because I was really only invested in it up to that point. And yeah. it took me like seven years to do that because the filler was so bad. I just, I would watch up to filler and then I just stopped. Yeah, no, it makes and sense. And it was like the show, the show was basically over before I finally went back and watched just, yeah. and I skipped all of the filler. <laughs> so. Oh, uh, trust me. Uh, the fillers are, I used to, I had a coworker when I worked at McDonald's because I would download it all. I'd be like, look, I'll get, I'll get it all to you and I'll, take out all the filler so you can just watch straight through what's all necessary um but like of all the characters in that show like i don't know i don't think i'd want to play as rukia in any fighting game like see the problem with rukia is like her the thing is her blade is the most beautiful blade yeah that is her spiel but she doesn't have bankai she doesn't have the strongest form she's not a captain only generally only captains can have the bankai form it doesn't make sense to me why you would have Rukia just, oh, my blade is now going to go from a silver blade to a beautiful white blade when you power up where you could have, like, uh, Hitsugaya and get his awesome fucking dragon wings, ice dragon wings, but- or Chad, or even Ishida. Like, I understand having Aizen, but also, again, Aizen's abilities aren't very visual, but you need a villain if you're going to have the heroes in it. Yeah, but, like, even that you even have, like, some of the, um, like, uh, the, the cat that turned into the lady i can't remember what her name was uh i know who you're talking i can't remember her um, name. like she was like a fucking ninja yeah like that would have been cool yeah i mean there there are better choices than rukia i understand i understand aizen he was essentially the big bad there are better choices than rukia you could have even gone with um uh fuck what's his name um the 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 second in command of his group with the red hair and he had the Renji. chain. Renji. You could have gone with Renji. Like his abilities are fucking awesome. Like that's a very when you're going with a video game, you want something so, more visually stunning than I that. don't know if you, if you remember who Renji was. His sword like you know how like their swords transformed? Like yes. it would go from just looking like a normal katana to like something weird. Yeah. His was the one that turned into like the whip saw blade thing. Okay. Where All like right. it was segmented and he could like yeah. whip it out at people. His and Ivy. Then, and then when he yeah, basically when he released his Bankai version, it turns into this giant dragon sword that he's oh, got. Oh, I forgot that he got a Bankai. Yeah, at a he he point. was he got he got strong enough to have a Bankai. Just like even uh the one dude in uh I I, I these names used to come off the tongue to me, and I can't remember I think, even. I think that show ended over five years ago. Yeah, I haven't watched that show in so long. But uh, the one captain who can't hear his sword. Oh, um, his Kimpachi. Kempachi, his second in command, had the sword that, like, he would combine the hilt and it would turn into a long pole arm. I thought his second in command was a little girl. No, was it a little girl? Yeah, remember she, he, his his vice captain was the little girl with like the pink hair that he like saved from like being murdered by a bunch of people. Uh, I can't rem- I can't remember if that was actually his second in command or not. But like his second in command in combat wise, well, he combined his blades and it turned into a pole arm. Mm-hmm. And then he got a. Uh, he has a bankai, but he doesn't want anybody to know that he has a bankai. And it's this awesome thing where, like, it hovers over him. He's got two giant, like, fist blades that he punches things with. It's like, there's so many other visually stunning abilities in that game than to have somebody who has a beautiful white ice sword that can go ice, ice. It's just lame. They're going to sell hundreds of dollars oh. of DLC for that game. Oh, oh yeah, yes, absolutely. And, so, and if the game is any good... It's apparently not... It's apparently atrocious. I will be a sucker and buy it all. Like, 
ah, jeez, that's a, like those characters in that. I, like, but the thing is, apparently, Yuro Uchi is the the girl that turned into a cat. Yes, apparently they they release like a Jump Force esque game like almost every. Year. So it, it, like this is the first time they really highly advertised it at E three. I think for, in a long time. Like, I think it's it used to just be uh Japan only. That would make sense. So what's next? Oh, so it looks like so I looked it up. Um Ikaku is the guy you're thinking of. Yes. I guess he at some point um so he was he was the third seat for Kempachi's. Yes. Okay. And then the little girl was the lieutenant. The Okay. So she was the second seat. But okay. I guess maybe I don't know by the end of it did she die or something? I don't uh, unless in the manga, I don't know. I don't know because it just says former lieutenant on the page. But anyway, that that I- Ikaku was the the guy's name. Yeah, Ikaku. And Yuchiri, Yuchiru, something like that, is the little girl. Yeah. Anyway, uh, where was I? Shenmue each characters. Oh well, also real quick on Shenmue, the Shenmue one and two re-releases are coming out in August. I did see that too. Um. I I saw that, but then I'm like, I feel like they announced that a while ago, and this is just repeat uh, news. No, they they didn't have a release date. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, so this is actually probably the big game news of the week. Amy Hennig confirmed that she has left EA, and apparently left EA a while ago. She just wasn't January, able to announce I think it. it. Yeah, was. like prior to them confirming that her game was canceled, um, yeah. and that she's starting a new indie studio. So you, you know who that is, right, Rich? No, I don't think so. I um, might. She used to be, be at Naughty Dog. She is the she was she basically created the Naughty Dog or Naughty Dog um, Uncharted series. Okay, like she did all the writing and stuff for the first three. Okay, I believe she started on four and she left like mid development for that, and that's when um Druckmann and oh I can't think of the other guy's name Staley Druckmann and Staley took over because they they had finished on. Uh, uh, Last of Us, and then moved over to Uncharted 4 after yeah. Amy left. But yeah, okay. she also, um, I didn't realize this, she was like the head writer for the Legacy of Kane series. And her first game credit ever as a writer was the side-scrolling action game featuring Michael Jordan. Nice. I can't, <laughs> um, like, something in the Windy City. Chaos in the Windy City. There you go. Um, nice. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, she she is known for doing really good single-player story-driven games. Um, and now she's looking to do like a small studio, cool. like 12 to 15 people, uh, which I'm not sure what sort of game's going to come out of that just because of the scope that she tends to work with. But I'm excited to see what happens, especially since we're not going to get that Star Wars game she was working on. No, unfortunately not. Apparently that was kind of a nightmare. Like she was over budget for pre-production, but it was also impossible to get anything approved because they couldn't just do something and then send it off. Everything they had to do, they had to try and get approval from Lucasfilm, and it just slows everything down and makes it all a nightmare. Yep. Yeah. So that that makes me a little more understandable about why these Star Wars games have a been bad, and especially like st- story based stuff. Like the first Battlefront had no story, and I'm wondering if that's why because it, they just didn't feel like dealing with getting approval. So they're like, okay, we're just gonna make it a fighter, and then none of this stuff matters. Yeah. Or a shooter, I should say, not a fighter. Um. But yeah, so she'll be doing something different. Yeah, it'll be uh, cool to see what she uh, comes up with with her own small team. I'm just double checking to see if there was anything else. Yeah, I, it, it was January. She hasn't yeah. she hasn't worked at EA since January. Um, yeah, 15 people at most is what she said. And yeah, that's kind of about it. But you know, like I'm sure we'll hear more once she actually has a studio up and running. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, that is all the news. Unless you guys had something. Nope. No, no. No? Oh, Jim Carrey is going to be Dr. Robotnik. <laughs> I'll... I'm gonna... You're fired. <laughs> you just, guys liked just, it. Just I'm, I'm, I'm taking... I'm sending them an email. You don't want to get a press pass for fucking... Just, just go upstairs. Me and Drew are going to finish. No, no. I'm good. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back to talk about the stuff we've done. All right, we're back. Uh, yep. Wait, yeah, we're hot. back. You tired over there or something? I, I just started stretching, and usually when I stretch, I start to yawn, too. I just thought maybe because you had to get up before noon, you were... A little bit, yeah, a little bit. So, uh, we didn't mention this before, but because it's 4th of July that we're recording on, we're all off from our normal jobs. Uh, so we're recording while the sun's still out. 
Uh, or well, well, I mean, it's sun's still summer, out and not about to set. Yeah. yeah, that's that is true. I could actually drive yeah. Druton home without the fear of getting pulled over. <laughs> that's true, and it'll it's already eighty seven out, which eighty eight according to Google. I mean, my phone pulls from Google also. Okay. So let's I'm gonna update it real quick because yours could be pulling from like a slightly different location. <laughs> All right, my, so. My phone says 86. No, my phone actually says 86 too, but my watch says 87. Okay. Um, but the real feel, would anyone care to take a wager? I just looked looking? at it. So. I, I'm not going to cheat based on what you told me earlier with what it was this I, morning. So, I just, I just looked at what it feels like. So guess what it feels like. Yeah, that's so, what I mean. The uh, real feel. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, 98. Nope, 99. Nine, oh, fuck! Oh, I, I, I go 90, fucking 11 phone, degrees more than what that fucking said right there. Damn it. My phone says 93. For the real feel? Feels like 93. Mine says the it's 86 right now, and the real feel is 99. My Google says 88 feels like 93. I mean, my, I'm pulling from AccuWeather, which I feel okay. is more accurate, because uh, it, it has the beginning called, of accurate. It's called AccuWeather. Yeah, it makes, but yeah, it's fucking hot. Yeah. I mean, yesterday at like four in the afternoon, it was 107 real feel outside. Oh yeah, I was. I got out of work at two yesterday, and I my air conditioner has sucked lately. So I went and got charged to charge it. It's fully charged. It still sucks. I don't even That's know how, how that hard works. It is. It's it's free on. You fill it up with. In, in yeah, I don't. Car. I honestly have no idea how to do that. It's. I've just never had to. a spray bottle. Literally, it's a spray bottle with a hose that you connect to your air conditioner. No, I realize that. I don't know where to connect it to. Is what I'm trying to say. I've never really looked at my AC unit outside. It's also like a 25-year-old AC unit. No, I'm talking about the car. Oh. Not this, oh. this AC is fine. Oh, I thought you meant in your house. No, no, my car. Pe- I know a lot of people have been complaining that their central air has been bad and that, like, they need Freon in it and stuff. No, I mean... Oh, we, yeah, the car is different. The car is easy. We had we had a, uh, a storm that uh, pissed off. Uh, we had a pissed off storm god last night. My yeah. power went out about four times. Mine, yeah, mine went out at least twice. twice. But, uh, yeah, that, I mean, besides that, my eight central AC has been fine. I had to, um, I didn't, so I forgot to change the air filter in my central AC for three years. Yeah. Um, I man, was that. that thing dirty. I actually, I have to do that. I haven't changed mine in about 10 months to a year. Yeah, you're supposed to do it every 30 days. You, uh, fuck, fuck that. No, or, you're, supposed, you're, not, you're supposed to check it every 30 days. Okay. You're supposed to change it every quarter, pretty much. Every it's, three months. Three yeah, to every, six months. So it's... It, it needs to be changed at least every 90 days. But, like, I mean, things are different now. But, like, when you had two dogs and two cats in the house, you should have probably been changing it every 30 days. Oh, yeah, days. absolutely. And same thing, like, with your three yeah. cats. Like, you, and, like, your house is smaller than Richie's is. Just like mine is, I believe, smaller than Richie's. Maybe. Probably. Like, I, I'm... full square footage, like, with both floors. Yeah. I think both of our houses are probably smaller than his. Probably. Um, I have the width. I just don't have the rooms. You guys have more rooms, and like, no, I uh, mean, you no. have you We're, have maybe it, it, a little bit more length. See, both of our houses are well. I guess yours is actually a three bedroom, isn't it, true? Yes, technically, technically. Yeah, like mine's a two bedroom. Mine's theoretically a two bedroom, technically a two bedroom, but it has that small room. I don't think can be legally considered a bedroom. Does it have a closet? It does. Then it's a bedroom. Oh, yep. I I thought it was too small to be legally considered a bedroom. No, nope. nope. size does not matter. It just needs a closet. Okay. One of the, when we were looking at houses, one of the houses we saw did not have a closet in the room, and it was claiming itself as a two bedroom. And our realtor, when we left the house, was just like, "That's not a two bedroom. Like, if you guys really like this house, we're not paying what they're asking for it because it's only a one bedroom." Really? Yeah. Okay. He's like, "The house is too small for what they're asking for it to begin with," and yeah, like that shouldn't be listed as a two bedroom house. <laughs> yeah. Um. It should be one bedroom with office. Basically, yeah. And it, cause it was kind of, you know how it, like, in your house, um, to get from, like, the room where Sarah does all her stuff to, like, the computer room, yep. you, like, pass through them? Mm-hmm. That's how this house was to get to the bathroom, though. Oh. Like, you pass through one of the, not even the mass, you pass through, like, the spare bedroom to get to the bathroom. Nice. It was weird. Um, it's like, don't mind me, I just got a shit. And I think I told you guys before, the master bedroom in this house, it only had a closet because they built a wall in the middle of the front porch. Right. And put in a second door in the bedroom. Even right. then, the master yes. bedroom may have actually just been part of the house, like, may have been the entryway at one point, and the door to the closet may have originally been the front door. That's so weird. Yeah, it was a super tiny house. It had a huge yard, though. Yeah. Um, You probably could have, like, 
bought the house, tore it down, built a new one, and no, because this so this lady was asking for ninety eight thousand for it, which not a lot of money, but totally not what that house was worth. That house was too small to pay that kind of money. Yeah, she refused to budge. Really? Yeah, and like we we were asking her, like like we made like a ninety four thousand dollar offer on it. Yeah, and she's like, nope. She didn't even counter offer. She would only take her asking price, which Jeez. means she either didn't really want to sell or she still owed more than she owed ninety eight. Uh, she yeah. owed not yeah, she owed she owed more than she could make. Yeah, exactly. Um I forget how we got on that topic. It's hot. Yeah. That's and then we uh, Oh yeah, the air filters. Yeah. Um but yeah, like I had just kind of forgot that it was a thing to do. <laughs> and yeah, I keep forgetting I have to. My luck, my air filter is just on the other side of this wall right here, so I just got it. Yeah, mine's just in the basement in the yeah. um in the the unit downstairs. Like it's so, super yeah. super easy to change. Like it, it took me thirty whole seconds to do it, and I had the extra air filters. It was just you know it's one of those like out of sight, out of mind things. Yeah, yeah. So I, I set a reminder every thirty days to like just go at least check it. It's like yeah. Kaylee sheds a lot. Yeah, I mean it's the the way I look at it, you. It depends on also how often you use it. Like right now, this thing is running on overdrive. I really should change it. But say September, I don't have to change it anymore. September through December, you don't really have to change it because it'll be, you probably won't be using it as much. So it doesn't actually matter how often it's being used. It's how much dust and stuff is in the house. Well, yeah. It, so it also helps with allergies and getting sick. Yeah, so if, but, you cl- if you change it regularly, um, it keeps the air quality in your house cleaner. But Even when it's not running. If you're not running it, it's not r- flowing air. Do you run heat, though? Or do you have baseball? Well, heat no. Or when, 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 yeah. So every, you're supposed to change oh, it every three months. Oh, you're talking about just like months. the months where you wouldn't so be running anything. For, yeah. So you really only need to change it twice a year because there's six months throughout the year where you might not be running it, technically, because you won't, it should be, I mean, in a perfect world where, uh, global warming isn't a thing, you shouldn't have to run it during fall and spring. But we don't live in such uh, yeah. a perfect it world. Depends on your house and your preferences too. Like every once in a while, like we'll we'll flip the air on for a little while in the spring if it's just like particularly like shitty out. Yeah. Um, especially because like having the windows open isn't always ideal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually need to get a new window unit for for our upstairs bedroom. Like the one we have is like four years old. It like it still works, but it's a pain in the ass to get the filter in and out of it. Yeah. It's, you know how some window ACs, like, the front actually, like, pops down and you can pull it from the top? Mm-hmm. Our filter comes from the side. So you have to, like, take it out of the window to get it out? No, or I, just... I can get it out. It's getting it back in because the wall is right there. Right. And there's, like, all the little clips and stuff in there, too, mm-hmm. that it's really hard to angle it in and slide it across. Like, it, it pulls right out because it bends a little bit. But it always takes me, like, ten minutes to actually get it to slide back in. That's what she... Yeah. You're welcome. Okay. Um, plus I just want, like, I don't know, it's, it's dirty and yeah. like, it's not something easily cleaned because like, I can see it's dirty on the inside mm-hmm. and yeah, it's probably just time to replace it. Maybe next, probably next year, like five years seems like a good, good run for one of those. Yep. Yeah. And we only, we use it at night. So it's not like we need anything like crazy powerful to cool the whole house. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, anyway, what have you guys been up to? Oh, you know, things and stuff. I, um. I've been playing a lot of uh, Fallout Shelter and uh, uh, Command and Conquer Rivals. It's uh, I've had um, I have a very busy summer ahead of me. I had a bachelor party this weekend. I have birthday parties, weddings, whatnot going on every weekend throughout the rest of the summer. So I've been trying to get more and more into cell phone games. So I started playing a lot more of Fallout Shelter, even though I originally said that Westworld is better. I enjoy Fallout Shelter a lot more. Westworld, there's just too much, and you can never actually walk away from it. So, like, you can constantly play that game for hours on end and still be doing something new because certain tasks only take a few seconds to a minute and not realize how much time you're actually spending on it. Whereas Fallout Shelter is a true cell phone game where I I, I set things up before we started recording and when we're done, I may have stuff to do because it's just, that's how cell phone games are yeah. supposed to be to me. And then I just, I love Command & Conquer Rivals. I'm fairly good at it. You should try like Clash Royale then. Maybe it's literally the same game. Yeah, Not exactly. But it's very, very, very the, similar. So in Command and Conquer Rivals, you're dropping um, like troops and vehicles. In Clash Royale, you're dropping monsters. Okay, like that's the only difference. It's still the the whole idea of like they get dropped on your side and you send them to like another area to attack. In in this case, rather than sending them to defend the the capture point. 
you're just sending them to attack the other tower. Okay. But yeah. A lot of people play it, so I I I will maybe try it out if I remember to. It's um, you know, it's it'll change things up for you a little bit. You know, you play yeah. a couple rounds of Command and Conquer, then you go play a monster game. Well, I generally I generally play daily monster or not monster hunter, uh a Command and Conquer just to do all my bounties and then walk away. And the past couple of times I've played, like I went the past two days I played, so like I think it was Sunday morning and this morning where the past two days I actually tried to play. I might have... No, yesterday night. So, I didn't play Monday, but I did all of my bounties, 6-0. and oh. Six matches, no losses, two two days in a row. And so, I you're got, cheating. No, I'm not cheating. I'm just good. I don't know, Drew. Is that what you're... Hey, I'm hearing he's t- cheating. Yep. Today's match, before you guys showed up, I actually had an opponent that was actually smart, and I couldn't counter him fast enough. So, I lost. That was my first loss in about two days. So, we distracted him from cheating. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. But, I just... I enjoy playing that game. It's fun. It's, uh... It's got a lot to it. The, uh, like... I just unlocked the Nod. So, now I have bounties for both GDI and Nod. So, it makes... It it changes up gameplay a little bit more. Um... And then, yeah, uh... Fallout Shelter, I've been sending things on quests. And right now, I have two quests out. And one person exploring the wasteland... Just because I need stuff so I can start crafting more better equipment to equip to my uh, people in my shelter. Um, besides that, I played some Monster Hunter. I know I didn't get the Platinum yet. I'm not supposed to talk about it. But I was I created an epic near invincibility armor set that uh, helped me kill Valhazak, Arch-Tempered Valhazak, with no issues after I created this set. Okay. It took two of its pieces. Um, so I had to kill Arch Tempered Valhazak twice before I could make this set. But then after that, I was able to kill him the next, um, four times with no problem. I think I died once when fighting him four more times. So it made the game a little bit easier. And now I just have this awesome set that every hit I deal refills my health to max health. So I almost never have to heal anymore. So pretty happy about that. It'll be nice to use against the next Arch Tempered things. They, uh, they tricked us. Uh, Sony did. They sent out a, um, a notification on PlayStation that, uh, the summer event was happening this week on Thursday, starting at Thursday at seven. No, it starts next week, but oh, they, they sent out the notification two weeks early or something like that. It's ridiculous. So we were, me and Evan were sitting there like, I want to play these, these events I haven't been able to play that they're going to give us. And what are these new events? And what are these new tickets that I need to get? And didn't get to play them. Um, but besides that, I will say that, uh, it was also kind of just a rough couple of days, rough, probably week or so. Cause, uh, any listeners of the show might remember there being dogs and, uh, pretty much a mascot, someone that would always bark if I barely moved. And I unfortunately had to put her down on Monday. She had arthritis and she was pretty much losing the ability to walk to a point where she couldn't walk more than a couple of feet without falling. And it was Saturday before I left for a bachelor party when this actually, like, progressed so bad that, like, I, I felt terrible leaving her. But we, I was feeding her her breakfast, and she walks into the kitchen, and she, her legs, feet fall forward, and her back legs fall split ways. And she couldn't move. She, I felt so bad. So, uh, yeah, I no longer have Loki. It sucks. She was the greatest dog, but that's also kind of why I haven't really done much anything else this week, because... Yeah. I was, I've been dealing, I've been dealing with that. So it's, I spend a lot of time on my cell phone and watching The Office since Monday. Playing just cell phone games and watching The Office, because I didn't really do, want to do much. But the bachelor party was great. We went to Fogo de Chao. Nice. And I love that place. It was funny because The Bachelor. Thanks for the invite. You don't know The Bachelor. <laughs> well, actually, you might have met him once or twice. But he, uh, he doesn't like red meat. Then why did you go to Fogo de Chao? We didn't know this when we planned it. How did you You guys not- are shitty friends. See, yeah, fuck. <laughs> Look. It's like I wouldn't take you to the Cheesecake Factory for your bachelor party because you don't like cheesecake. Because you're but a broken human. plenty more than just cheesecake. Yeah, here. but we'd go to Cheesecake Factory for cheesecake. Like, all like, their other food is just mediocre at best. Yes. I, that, that's your opinion? I think their food's really no, good. I mean, look, they have good food, but it's one of those, like, I'm not gonna take you to Cheesecake Factory when you don't like cheesecake, I mean, when we could go to a steak place and you could get a good steak. But, that's the thing, like, we didn't know that he, that he didn't like red also, meat. Also, I don't think you can be friends with him if he doesn't like red meat. Oh no, absolutely, I'm probably gonna just drop him from my friends list as soon as his wedding's over. I, I mean, I think he just needs to not go to the wedding. 
Uh, I'm in it. I can't not go. I'm. That's even more reason not to go. Like make a stand. <laughs> yeah. We caught his wedding. But he uh, like we planned it all, and then he let it drop like a couple, like maybe two weeks prior. Like, yeah, I don't really like red meat. Like we were talking about it, and he's like, I'm not a big fan of red meat, so I'm not gonna have steak at my wedding. And I was like, who doesn't fucking like red meat? I mean, to be fair, I didn't have steak at my wedding. I mean, like, it was on the menu, but I had the chicken. Well, no. He originally wasn't even going to have it on the menu. Oh. Yeah. He's weird. Uh, he's he's that kind of guy who would go to a party and eat nothing but cucumbers, because that's all he likes. He's a picky eater. So, we we bring him to a Fogo. Luckily, they had uh, bacon-wrapped chicken. They had sausage. They had other chicken legs. And then they had um, uh, the greatest thing in the world, Parmesan-crusted pork. How no, about, like, pork? That's the thing. He loves pork, but doesn't like red meat, and I don't understand that. Pork's white pork's meat. White meat. It is literally the, the other, other white, white meat. meat. I know, but usually people don't like pork because it's like not as healthy for. It's no. terrible for you, actually. No. Um, no, not all pork. Pork's not really that good. For, it's super fatty and not that healthy for you. Super salty. It's. I mean, it's it's no. I mean, it's only salty because of the way that it's prepared. But like, meat isn't just like naturally salty. Well, no, like, there's, it's got, like, higher sodium counts in it and stuff. No, like, uh, it's not. I, I don't know that that's actually true. But pork isn't, pork tends to be cured more. That, so, it, I, like, you are correct that, like, a lot of the way that you get pork is higher in sodium because of the way it's prepared. But it's also, like, pork is just generally, like, if you think of the levels of healthiness, it's usually chicken, red meat, like poultry, red meat, pork. So I actually, I think you so, might be. I think it's your, chicken, pork, red meat. I'm pretty sure red yeah. meat is work, worse worse than pork. Red meat's way fucking fattier than pork. Way fattier than like a standard piece of pork. It doesn't make sense. Like, like I, I honestly see your your thinking. Like bacon, not good for you compared to probably like a good lean cut of beef. But like a pork tenderloin or like what, what did you just say it was? It was. It's it's. Parmesan crusted pork. I don't remember. Oh, they didn't tell what, you what like. I don't cut remember it was. the cut it was. But yeah, like bacon generally not good for you because of its it, bacon is super fatty and salty because of the way it's prepared. But yeah, like like a good pork tenderloin, especially like a fresh one, um, not all that different from like having like a good piece of chicken or turkey. Well, I always thought that pork wasn't that good for you. Like, I I tend to avoid pork not because I don't like it, just because I don't I like I I, I usually went for the high protein and there's more protein in in red meat. I believe than there is in pork. Like, I think you're wrong about like, that too. <laughs> I, I've done research. I okay. swear. Like red, like chicken has the highest protein, or turkey has the highest protein. Content. That that I turkey, didn't know. then chicken, then beef, then pork. Really? Yeah. So like I usually went with uh, chicken and beef because I don't go out and just buy turkey breasts, right? Like sometimes I'll just go out and buy a turkey roaster and roast a whole fucking turkey, but I'll get the turkey bacon also because it's cheap. Um, and it tends to be better for you. Yeah, it's absolutely better for you. Um, I just, I just found that weird that like you don't like red meat, but you like pork. And usually, it's people who don't like red meat also don't like pork because of like the health aspect of it. But I mean, he said he had a good time. There was uh, like he loved the the uh, the salad bar. They had like feta, feta, and it was like what was it? Watermelon covered in feta cheese, which was just interesting but good. Have you ever been to Rodizia? <coughs> I've been to Rodizia. <laughs> Thank you. Um, did you ever have the pineapple that they do? The pineapple is the best thing yeah. in the world. Have you, ever, have you ever been there, Drew? Yeah. That pineapple is the oh, best yeah. reason it to go to so Rodizia. It's, that's the only reason I would go to Rodizio over Fogo is because of the pineapple. It's also $25 cheaper. It's $25 <laughs> cheaper, but like I, you know, I'd rather pay the extra 25 bucks to get the better quality meats. I know I noticed that Rodizio doesn't do as much beef. No, they don't. They have a lot more of other. Stuff they have a lot there. of chicken and pork. Yeah, because it's they like they're they're cheaper, so yeah. they're not gonna have like meat. Red meat is expensive. Um, but yeah, that's it. We we did go karts for the morning or for the first thing of it, and it was super fun. I'm still sore from them, and that was on Saturday. That's because you're an old man now. You are too old to uh, go go kart. I I my back like my lower ribs from like cutting these turns so tight, just jamming into the seat, friggin' hurt. You are a month away from being 30. You are too old to go go-karting. I know. I need to start go 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 karting more so that I'm not hurting anymore. No, like literally you're too old to do it. No. no. You are always going to be sore after I know. Now. I know. But if uh, the more you do it, the more you get used to the soreness, and then it's not that bad. No, go karting's going to make you always feel bad. I know. I know. But it's still a blast. It's fucking awesome. I've never I've never been a fan. No. Have you ever been to Speed Raceway? 
No, I, I did it once when I was, like, a lot younger. It's just, I don't like driving a car, let alone driving, like, a little go-kart around a track. I mean, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't mind driving. I, like, I've always enjoyed, like, driving the car, and I've always enjoyed racing games and racing in general, so go-karts have always been something that I've always liked doing. Speed Raceway's got the best go-karts generally in the area. We went to the one in Horsham, but there's also one in Cinnaminson. Yeah, I knew the one in Cinnaminson. Yeah. Um, like there, uh, there is also Millville. Um, they have their go karts, but when I was there, I wasn't a big fan of them. So I just, I, I think Speed Raceway is the best out of them all, and it's indoors. And even though it was indoors, it was still friggin' hot in there. Like driving this go kart at the end of the first race, I like get up off my seat, feel my back. I'm just drenched in sweat from just being pushed back onto the Ugh. seat. It. There's, these things can get up to like 60 miles an hour. Oh, that's fast. Yeah. No, I mean, I, re- I realize that considering you're in a, like a little go kart, like that is actually yeah. fast, but. Yeah. That's an open air go kart. Like the, the G's that hitting your chest, you're, I'm breathing like <sighs> the entire time because you like your chest is just being compressed with the G forces you're getting hit with. It's nuts. It's awesome though. But yeah, that's just. It's been my week, week of not much. Still haven't played on Monster Hunter yet. Still haven't played any new games yet. God, you're the worst. I've been wanting to go back to play Fallout 4. That's a, that's, that's a bad idea. Probably, but. Just, just wait until fall when 76 comes out. Yeah, but I don't know if I'm gonna have a lot of people to play 76 with. You're not. I, I'm so, probably gonna get 76. Yeah, yeah, but you only play games for like an hour a day from 6 o'clock in the morning till 7 in the morning. Fairly accurate. <laughs> so, like. <laughs> I, I, I had a trouble, I had a tough time getting up at nine this morning. So, we wouldn't be playing together. That's it. What about you, Drew? What did you do this week? Uh, I went to Ocean City on Saturday. Sounds had a, terrible. Had a beach day. It was alright. I got sunburned though, but otherwise it was fine. Just hung out by the water. Yeah. It was hot as shit, except then you get going in the water for a while, cool down, come out. Basically, everything evaporated immediately, and then you were hot as shit again. Sounds oh, about gross. right. You know what's uh, funny? Like, like, it's like side tangent. You guys heard about the water main break yesterday in Philly? Oh, yeah, it looked like it was a full on flood. Um, guy I work with is moving into an apartment right in that area of the city. Nice. Um, and he had to go there because Verizon was getting installed yesterday. Oh no! But he was saying that like the water was still so bad that it, even though it was like 107 with the heat index. None of it was evaporating. That's how much water had Jeez, like poured yeah, into right. the streets. Yeah, I was watching uh, like the 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 clips of it, like the helicopter circling around. I was like, it looked like it was just like a dam burst and just yeah, came it, down. It reminded me of like when you see like the um the news reports of like hurricane flooding in like Florida, like not the really bad flooding, but like when it's like yeah. just starting or like near the end of it. Yeah. Like where like just everything in the street is just washed away. Mm-hmm. Some somebody was walking in the street in the video I saw and it went up to their knees. They got to the middle of the road. It was they they were out of it. But as the further between the roads that they were, like closer to the sidewalks, just was like up to their knees about this. Yeah, that's nuts. insane. But sorry, go ahead, Drew. Uh, I've been playing some Diablo three season. Got all that gear already. Did you Did you play any like arcade stuff in Ocean City? They uh, no, there, no. It was just so hot that like we eventually we were there for like four hours or so. We got there at like ten thirty, left at like two thirty, and, and spent just, most of it on the beach. Yeah, basically all of it was on the beach. We were gonna play mini golf, and we're just like, you know what? It's too hot. We yeah. Let's just go home. Uh, makes sense. And then played some Diablo, and then because of Twitch giving out, or Amazon and Twitch giving out a bunch of games, I went and looked at what I had and forgot I had SteamWorld Dig 2. Oh, I was nice. playing some of that this morning. How that is game, that? I've always heard good things. It's really neat. Uh, it looks really good. The music's real good. It's simple. Is you that... know, it's got puzzles you're trying to figure out and whatnot. It's not a roguelike, is it? Um, no, not really, because it's not like you die and start over. Like, you just respawn in town yeah, when you die. Yeah, it's just like a, like a you platformer, lo- like, right? You lo- lose the stuff you had on, some of the stuff you had on you if you die, so you don't get all the money you had for stuff you had picked up, but... Would that make it, like, a roguelite, then? Uh, I've never gotten even... that. Like, I know what a roguelike is, but I've never quite been able to identify what a roguelite is. Uh, no, there's... I guess, I mean, there is a little progression, like, you're gaining experience, and 
unlocking upgrades for your character, but like th- it's not a new dungeon when you respawn. Okay. Like it's a straight progression. Okay. So it is more just like a platformer with some light RPG stuff in it. All right. Like it's not like Rogue Legacy where when you die, yeah, you had some sort of progression and carry over money, but it's a entirely new layout when you go back in. So, like, I have four fast travel points unlocked. Either three or four. I'm. Con- it's either three or four, and I'm just confusing if the town is the fourth one or if I have four in the dungeon. But you go through, you unlock stuff, you break walls, you... I've found two new areas, like, with different backgrounds and stuff so far. I don't know how many there are, but it's neat. It's cool. It was free. So nice. Sounds fun. Yeah. That's about it. All right then. Yeah. Um so I just for you real quick um I found a show on Netflix. Okay. Um Erica and I started watching it. We won't, we watched the first three episodes. It's a cooking show. Okay. Um did you ever watch Worst Cooks in America or know of it? I know of it. Um so it's like a bunch of people that are bad at cooking basically getting like shown how to make things okay. and then trying to make them. You, I, yeah. I, I take it you're probably familiar because I yeah. know you and Sarah, Sarah watch a lot of it. Sarah loves that show and it also gives her extreme anxiety seeing people being this bad at cooking. Yeah. I don't understand how people can be that bad at cooking. Um, like, it's not that hard. I mean, there are people that bad at cooking. I know. It's just, it's um, not that hard. Like, I used to think I was really bad at cooking until, like, watching shows like that. Yeah, same. Um, And then you guys know that, like, that Cupcake Wars show or Cake Wars, whatever it's called, where it's like... Kind of like chopped, but with baked goods. Yeah. Like, I, th- I think it's usually yeah. like three people. They get given some sort of like, you have to make like cupcakes with this flavor profile yeah. using only these four ingredients. Yeah. So it's like those two shows combined. Um, it's called Nailed It. Okay. I've, I think I've seen it on Facebook yeah. or, or on Netflix. So it's, um, there, there's a lady host who is like one of the judges. Mm-hmm. And then there's this French pastry chef chocolatier guy. Who is like the head judge, and then every episode has a new guest judge. Okay. Um, and it's three people who all like want to be bakers and like do like the fancy cakes with like crazy decorations and all on them, but none of them are good at it. And there's there's two challenges per episode. The first one is usually something small. So in the first three episodes, they had to do um cake pops that okay. um each person had like a different set of cake pops they had to try and reproduce. The one. The only two that I remember from that episode were the one guy had a finger and a ring, and, like, the ring was supposed to be able to fit onto the finger. And then another person had um, two mouths, like a guy's mouth and a girl's mouth that you can make kiss. Okay. Um, and then one of the other – the next one was um, donuts. They had to make donuts and uh, decorate them to look like they were pirate-themed. I, I know one of them was, like, a maple log, and it had, like, a pirate map drawn on it. Okay. So, like – complicated things but like if you know what you're doing they shouldn't be that complicated um the third one of them was probably the hardest one because they had to make a cake and then they had to decorate the cake so that it looked kind of like a hot tub with an animal in it okay so it was um a giraffe not a giraffe a zebra an elephant and pig were like the three animals that were in it and it was just like a small round cake and they used kit kats on like the ends around the sides to make it look like a barrel basically and chocolate ganache on top of it to make it look like um like a pool of water, like a dark water, basically. Yeah. And then like they used um uh fondant and like rice krispie treats to make like the animal shapes. This one guy decided to just make a cake without reading the instructions because okay. they, they literally give him directions on how to make everything. Oh, Jesus Christ! So he just made his own cake. Um, and apparently the cake was very bad. <laughs> yeah. And then he did not read how to make the the ganache, which all chocolate ganache is, is like a certain type of chocolate mixed with hot heavy cream. Right. And the hot heavy cream melts the ganache, and then it, it almost makes like a pudding consistency or like yeah. a jello consistency. So it's like thicker. Mm-hmm. Um, he just kept taking like chocolate chip, like the big chocolate wafers, I should say, and right. putting them in a plastic bowl and putting them into the fucking microwave. Oh my God. And he did it once, and then like the microwave's smoking, and he pulls it out, and like he, the chocolate is that like congealed melty he, mess that it he burnt burns. it he burnt yeah. it yeah um couldn't figure out what happened so then he does it again but this time he grabs the fucking kit kats that he's supposed to use to go around Jesus the, the cake and um puts them into the microwave and then when he pulls them out and all the cho- and, and he's looking at it, he's like why are there wafers in this like it's, it's, 
<laughs> like, there's no reason to be that bad at cooking. Like, yeah, but I, it's and they gave you instructions. Like, why aren't you just yeah. reading the instructions? It was so good. It's it's this manly attitude he's probably got. Like, he, I'm a guy. I don't have to read the instructions. He was an older guy, and like the second the second cake they had to make, he did read the instructions for, and apparently he made a very good cake that time. Yeah. But the second cake in that particular episode, it was a like a Jaws cake. So it was a giant shark coming out of the water with like icing waves around it. And um, it had like a surfer hanging out of its mouth and the surfboard. And like, it was a really cool looking cake. Yeah. And they had to reproduce that and no one did a very good job. Yeah. But this guy in particular did not put any buttercream between the layers of cake. So it was supposed to be like six cakes high. And he was literally just taking them out of the pan and just stacking them it's on just, each other. And then covers it in the fondant and walks away to grab something and you just literally watch the cake just slowly tilt and fall to the floor oh my so God. he went from having like the six or seven cakes high to having three left <laughs> <laughs> wow that's just oh that makes me so mad it was it's, it's one of those shows where like we're watching it and we're just laughing because like these people are so bad at it but they're trying and they're just all so bad at it one person following the directions forgot to put eggs in their cake okay which i mean makes a bad cake like, the yeah. cake was bad. The cake doesn't rise if you don't have ca- if um, you don't have eggs. But it's basically, if you win the first round, um, you get, like, a prize. Yeah. Like, um, the the first and third episode, they got a new stand mixer. Which, those things are fucking expensive. I want a stand mixer. Yeah. So. Like, both people got one of those in the first and third episode. I forget what the person in the second episode got. But then, um, if you win the second one, you get um, $10,000. <laughs> Okay. So winning the big cake one is better. And they don't judge it just on the decoration. They judge it on, like, how well you're able to reproduce it and the taste of the cake. Yeah. So, like, if everybody makes a really bad-looking cake, but one person makes one that tastes really good <laughs> um, and, like, has, like, a good ratio of, like, icing to cake and everything, mm-hmm. then, like, they'll end up winning. Okay. But, like, everybody looks genuinely, like, happy when they win. Like, I think every person in those first three episodes was crying when they won. I mean... Because they just won $10,000. Yeah, that's $10,000... Stand mixer, like, oh, uh, man. The, so far, the person that wins the stand mixer has not also been the person to win the whole thing. Hey. Um, I, I don't know which I would... I mean, I'd be excited for the $10,000, but I'd be pretty you can damn buy, excited for a You can buy mixer. a stand mixer with that $10,000. Yeah. Um, was... But it's cool because in the... So in the first round, they, they don't have anything. In the second round, they all get a panic button where, like, if they can, if they need help, they can hit that, and one of the actual chefs will come over and, like... Okay. They get, like, I think two or three minutes with them of, like, asking questions and getting pointed in the right direction. Okay. Whoever comes in last in the first competition, though, like, just does the absolute worst, gets a, gets a panic, gets a separate panic button that they can hit, and the host of the show will come over and annoy people for two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, literally, she just walks behind the person and just goes, what you doing? What's going on? Can I try this? How's that going? What's this? And or just like repeating their name over and over again just to like stress them out and distract them. And it, it's worked. Hey, yeah. Other than the one lady that had kids, like, like one of the contestants <laughs> had kids and it just, it did nothing for her. She just kept going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, it's a surprisingly entertaining show. And I feel like I didn't know who the lady was, but on the first episode, there's a really old lady on there. Um, I, I ended up looking her up after the fact. Um, I feel like it's the sort of person that Sarah would probably, like, see the name and be like, oh, that lady. Maybe. Um, just, it, it's, it's, it just seems like something she would know yeah. just because she watches that sort of stuff. Yeah, I, I didn't, she has watched the first season of this. Oh, has she? Yeah, well, because I just, I was, like, I just sent her a text and I was looking it up on Netflix to set, let her know if she didn't. And I was like, oh, look, all these episodes are already watched. Yeah, so the second, the first season came out in March. The second season just came out last week. Okay. Yeah. It's only, I think it's 13 episodes altogether. Like it was yeah. like six episodes and then seven episodes. It, they might be doing like a quarterly release. Well, it, it wasn't like the way they do some shows where they filmed all of it. I think it did well enough in the first one that they just immediately yeah. started a second. Well, it like, it makes sense like a game show type thing like this to where, yeah. like, all right, let's just do like a couple episodes, like 13 episode record. Like, you can do that within the amount of, like, three or four days, and then just... Yeah, exactly. Boom, here you go. But, you got but you the, got an entire season. Yeah, the guest judge in the first episode is one of those, like, super famous cake artist people. And she's, like, 90, or, like, yeah. mid-80. She was born in 1930. <laughs> yeah. Um, She was the coolest fucking old lady I've <laughs> ever seen on a show. Like, she's up there with, like, Cloris Leachman of just, like, giving no fucks anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, at one point, while everyone was baking, 
she just gets up and walks the fuck away into the pantry where like they can grab stuff and just she's like i like licorice and like she took some licorice (laughs) and then like she's looking at all like the pots and pans and like she pulls one down she's like this is really nice i'm gonna keep this and just walks away (laughs) with it she goes back to like the other chef that's there like the main judge and she's like did you see this this is really good like you know it's like there's no ridges the way a lot of the ones they're using have in them she's like i'm keeping this (laughs) it's like you know if you're gonna steal you gotta steal big yeah um that's pretty cool yeah she was the best and her cake so like you know like when when cake artists do like the flowers yeah her flowers look like real fucking flowers nice like i thought that they i thought that this cake actually had a bouquet of flowers on top okay and like i looked her up and like saw like pictures of her other cakes and like that's just what she does like all of her flowers and stuff look like real flowers it's insane um but i would definitely recommend if you just need like background noise shows i'll have to to check it out once once the office is done i'll probably try putting it on yeah and every time every every time they have to present their stuff they they lift the lid and they go nailed it even though they didn't (laughs) oh god (laughs) Like in any way, shape, or form. There's there's a uh, a Netflix movie that I want to watch uh, called Tau T A U that looks really cool. It's like um like an, and some person is running an experiment with an AI, and so this AI has to keep these people in this building, and the AI is allowed to hurt them if they try to escape, kind of thing. All right. Like, it looks it's just released. It looks really cool. I hope it is. Because a lot of Netflix movies tend to look really cool, but aren't. So, I don't know. I can't remember who's in it or anything, but I just, I saw it the other day, and I'm like, I want to watch it. Nice. Um, I also just last night watched that first episode of Cloak and Dagger. Okay. The Freeform show. Right. I think it's like five or six episodes in now. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, I um, keep seeing a lot of people talk about how it's pretty good. Yeah, like, it went differently in the first episode than I expected it to. Like, like being at least, like relatively familiar with the characters i kind of knew what to expect but uh it definitely starts out differently than i thought it would have which okay. is, was actually you know refreshing like it, it didn't go this i mean it went the standard tv tropes but kind of like spun everything uh, in a different way yeah um so yeah I'm, I'm i actually had erica watch the first episode this morning while when i left so she did she texted me a little while ago and said that was interesting like i'd like to watch more of it yeah cool. and she's very hit or miss on those like comic book based shows like she likes the gifted, but could care less about any of like the CW shows. Yeah. Um. And then I I, I still been playing Xenoblade. I'm thirty ish hours in. Okay. Um. I'm getting really aggravated with all the times that they make you run through areas that have level eighty ninety monsters that target you regardless of your level. Like it's not like an MMO where unless like you go fuck with them, they leave you alone. They target you all the time, and a lot of them are birds that are just flying overhead that you have no. There's no way to, like, maneuver them because they'll just fly above you, target you, and chase you for 10 minutes. Hmm. And if they manage to land a hit on you, it's one hit kill because they're 40 levels higher than you. Maybe you're underleveled. I'm not, though. Because, like, every time I hit a story beat, I'm, like, three or four levels higher than the enemies. Oh. Yeah, I, um, I, I looked. So there was one part where I got to an, to an area that when I got through it, like, all the enemies that I had to fight to get to this part were the like the proper level they were like 30 to like 36 and i'm like i was like 35 at the time um and then as soon as i walk out the door following the compass to where i'm supposed to go um there's this like mixture of like a 34 a 34 a 34 and 90 and there's there was probably three dozen enemies down there um and it was either 34 or like 82 to 90 and then a bunch of birds flying around that were all in the 80s and it took me seven tries of running through here to get through to like the checkpoint where like it cut to a, a cutscene. And I looked it up. I'm like, maybe I'm going the wrong way. Like maybe this isn't how you're supposed to get there. And like I made a wrong turn someplace and my compass is just pointing me because that's where the thing is. And nope, you are literally just supposed to run through this as fast as you can and hope to not get hit. Cause it's one of the, cause it's one of those because the animals like all patrol like their paths and all like. You can't just systematically take out the lower level things t- to move on because they aggro to each other. And sometimes yeah. they will run and pull others in just like an MMO would. Yeah. But like in an MMO, it's usually in an area where everything's the same level. So like if you're in a group, like you can normally crowd control and mm-hmm. make it through this. But in this one, you know, I, I can take on six things that are all at my level or like roundabout. As soon as you throw a random thing in its level 80, like, yeah, no, it's going to hit each of my characters in turn and everyone's dead. Yeah. 
Um, so like that is just getting really frustrating with like, otherwise like the story is interesting. The gameplay is, is fun and all, but that bullshit, like I almost turned it off the other night because of that. Yeah. Just yeah. because it was one of those, like, I don't want to do this. Like this yep. isn't fun. Like nope. there's no way for me to control this section. Like I can't, like I can't sneak through it because they're all flying above me. So it's not like there's a path I can hide on or anything. Yeah. And as soon as one gets you, you just have to run and hope that you don't get hit. Yeah. Um, that sucks. That's kind of weird. Yeah, and it's been like this since the beginning. It's just in the beginning, the areas were more open, so it was easier to sort of like weave in and out, and there weren't as many flying things. This particular one, though, there was just a lot of stuff flying too. Okay. Yeah. Um. But I also bought a NES Classic. Nice. Yeah. Um. That thing is fun, just like the SNES was, except the controller is three feet long. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I bought two 10 foot extension cables on Amazon for like eight bucks. Okay. Yes. Which is, I can use for that and the SNES because it's just the Wii U or the, the Wii remote connector. Right. Yeah. For both of them. Uh, so I've been playing like on, on the NES Classic so far. I played, um, the original Mario Brothers. Okay. Which Erica and I were actually playing that like two player. Um, I forgot how that one ends up working where like player two picks up after you die, but they just pick up from the beginning of the game. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's been so long since I played two player on that. Like, it's probably been 30 years. Mm hmm. Um, that I thought that she would just pick up where I died. <laughs> I'm no. like, oh, that's no. right. You go all the way back and yeah. Yeah. do it over. There, there was one time I was playing with somebody and I think I got to world five before I died. And then they had to start at world one. They died immediately. I was like, all right, I'll play again. And they start back up at world five. You yeah, know, I, I got to world eight before I died. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, I also know where all the warps are. Yeah. So, okay. So you like, used warps. Yes. Yeah, so like Erica's watching me, and I'm. I just bolt. Through. Like I get. I get from level one one to eight one in probably two three minutes. Yeah. Um. Just because I know exactly where everything is, when to jump, and everything. Um. So, and it's world one two. As soon as I get past the first little like pillar section, and there's that weird brick formation mm -hmm. that's floating. Yeah. I jump on that. Jump onto the top and just run across the top of the level. Yeah. So I get through that in no time at all. And then I basically run right through four, go right up to Beanstalk in four, two, and then eight, one. And that's where I kept dying. I kept dying on eight, one, because it had been so long since I did that one that I was just, I was really bad at timing my jumps for some of those like weirder pit ones where like mm -hmm. you, you have to actually like not do a full jump because if you do a full jump, you're going to fall down the second pit. Yeah. Uh, Erica, I don't think, got past 8 or 1 2. I think she kept dying in 1 2. Oh, poor Erica. Yeah. Can't beat Mario. She also, like, I don't think she ever played Mario, like the original Mario Brothers. Like, if she did, like, it was, you know, years and years ago. But, like, she didn't realize at first that you could, like, hold B to run the whole time. So she was having trouble, like, coordinating, like, the running to jump to get, like, up onto a thing. Um, like, in, in 1 2 near the end, there's the Fire Flower. Yeah. Um, that, like, I showed her where it was, and she got it, but she couldn't do the, like, run and jump backwards to, like, get up there to get it, because it was a little too high for her. Um, but, like, she started to get, get the hang of it near, like, while we were finishing. Um, we also tried to play Super C, which is Contra. Well, yeah. Yeah. Contra 2. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't mean it was Contra 1, yeah. I just meant it is a Contra. Sorry. <laughs> um... I did not know that the Konami code does not just work on that one, it's a different, like, iteration of the code. Wow, really? Yeah. Um, and it does not give you 99 lives. It just gives you 10. Yeah. I which, didn't know well, that one. Con in Contra, it's 30. I thought it was 99. Nope. No. 30 lives. Okay. Well, I was wrong on that anyway. But yeah, it's not just up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, start. It's it's similar, but not quite the huh, same. Weird. Uh, but Maybe yeah, no, it's like, like up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, AB, AB, start. No, it's actually shorter. Okay. Um, But yeah, it only gives you 10. And... We went through those 10 lives real quick because Contra is fucking hard. Yep. And Erica had never played one before, so she didn't realize, like, how hard they were. Yeah. That and uh, Double Dragon 2 is on there. Awesome. That game is fun. Forgot that you have to hit A and B at the same time to jump. We got a game right. over because we couldn't figure out how to jump. <laughs> it was literally, like, in, in the first level, um, you get to a point where you have to climb up a ladder. And then when you get to the ladder, there's, like, a door. Guys come out of it for a little while, and then you're expected to go right, but you have to jump up a ledge. And we just keep walking at the ledge, and the ledge just keeps walking us off the edge of the stage, and we couldn't figure out what the fuck was going on. Um, when we restarted, I just started hit, tapping buttons, and I hit up, jump in, or A and B at the same time, and I jumped. I'm like, oh, that's right. 
Well, because one's punch, one's kick, right? Yeah, one of them's punch forward, the other one is kick behind you. Right. Which is also annoying because I, it's, I mean, I don't know the last time I played Double Dragon 2, but it's, so if you're facing towards the right of the screen, A is punch, B is kick behind you. If Which you turn around, up. they switch. Oh! Yeah, so if you're facing right, A punch, B kick. If you're facing left, B punch, A kick. Well, you know what? In fair, all right. It makes sense. I mean, it makes sense. It's B it's, is attack left. Well, so it's B is attack left, A is attack right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But that's not how your brain functions anymore. <laughs> like, sure. Like it. It took me a while to like, and even even after we were playing for a while, like I think we got to like level three or so before we like moved on. Um, I was I was still like occasionally hitting the wrong one just out of like. You know, I'm I'm expecting A to always be punch, and it's just not. Well, and yeah, like, well, that's the going into it with the thought of one button being punch, one button being kick, not one button being attack right, one button being attack left. Like, that's that's where the hang up is. If you go, it's how you're thinking about the buttons yeah. acting, not what they're actually doing. Yeah, exactly. Um. And then on my own, I played uh, Zelda a little bit. Uh huh. That's still Zelda. I actually yeah. was, I was playing that when the power went out. Cleared the first dungeon, was on the way to the second, and the fucking power went out. Oh, I was in the middle of a match of uh, Command and Conquer, and the power went out and kicked me offline because I was connected to Wi-Fi. I mean, that sucks. But like, I have not played the original Zelda. I've never actually beaten the original Zelda. I have not played through more than the first dungeon, and I don't know how long. Yeah. Just because like it's a hassle because like I don't know where the dungeons are, so I actually have to look up a map. Because that's how that game was. Like, yeah. You, you needed the map that came with the instruction guy to find your way around anyway. Yeah. So, like, I, I ran through the first dungeon pretty quickly because that one's super easy. Went the wrong direction to the second one. Had to turn around and head back to it. Was two screens away from it when the power went out. Uh, nice. And, like, I didn't have a save state since the first, since, since the boss of the first dungeon. So, that sucked. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but it, that's still Zelda. Zelda's a cool game. Yep. Um, Mega Man 2 is a cool game, too. Sure is. Um, it's also, like, that is the one Mega Man I'm actually good at. Yeah. So I kind of ran through the first, like, three Robot Masters in, like, ten minutes and moved on. Yeah. Um, and then I played a whole bunch of Punch-Out. Okay. Punch-Out's uh, good. Punch-Out's really good. A uh, couple things. Do you have something? No, 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 so I just it reminded me. I was watching a bunch of the Summer games done quick. Okay. And then actually also went back to the awesome games done quick from the winner and watched the guy play both punch outs at the same time on one controller. Oh yeah. I remember that. I didn't watch it, but I remember seeing it, it's impressive. Um That's just stupid. No, you want to see something impressive? Watch the um go find the video for the Super Mario Maker speedrun. Okay. Um it's a blind three on three. Yeah, I Yeah, so it's like every time one every time it's two teams of three, every time somebody dies they um have to rotate to the next person, and none of them have ever seen the levels being played before. Okay. And then once they finished, I think three or four of them all went up and like did a level that they had been practicing. So two of them made the level. The third one, somebody made it for them because they're just not good at making levels. Yeah. But it was one of those like we just want to sh- like we want to show off what this game can do. Yeah. So like one level was all about like be like Mario World. I want to say what you can do with carrying stuff like the shells and the pow blocks and everything the other one was mario one with what you can do with shells and and everything but not being able to pick them up Mm -hmm. and then uh the last guy did um did an entire thing blindfolded nice like this stupid this it is a thing that i could not do with weeks of practice probably he did fucking blindfolded that's so and it was all capes and stuff so he he it was like he had to run off of a thing, hit hit a hit a shell to bounce up at just the right time to grab a cape feather as it was falling, and then run and jump at the right time to take off and then dive bomb and then come back up to avoid a bunch of spinny saw blades and Jesus. it was insane. He was the only guy that like or he he died the least out of all of them. Jeez. Whereas like everybody else was just dying constantly on their levels. He barely, I think he died twice. That's nice. And it, like, one of them wasn't even to die, like, he just, he, he missed a cue and just, like, let himself fall off so that he could, um, start it over. Yeah. Yeah, it was, that particular run was insane. Uh, but yeah, Punch Out, real good. Um, I, it's been a really long time, like, most of these games. 
Did you guys ever notice that Glass Joe has only ever won one match? Uh, I, w- if I hadn't just watched that punch out speed run the other day, I don't think I would have been able yeah. to tell you that. No, so didn't. he has lost 99 and won one. Somehow though, he is ranked two in that circuit. Really? Yeah. So I don't know if that circuit is literally just three boxers plus, plus Lil Mac. But yeah, he is ranked two with one loss and nine or one win and 99 losses. I, it might be. It might be like he's like, I don't know. That's weird. Um, but that's also like, I shared a thing on Facebook the other day. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, apparently Gamora is the last of her kind. Yeah. But Thanos only kills half the population. So, in the comic books, he kills all of them. And actually, I don't, th- I don't even know if Thanos killed all of them. The movie and the comics are different. She is not the last of her kind well, no, no. in the movie. In the movie, in Guardians of the Galaxy, when she's imprisoned, it says the last of her, it's the last living whatever her race so is. So that, that's a fuck up then, because in, um, in Avengers, Thanos literally says your world is flourishing now. Yeah. So yeah, that's just that's them. That was an Easter egg in Guardians that they then forgot about for yeah. Avengers. Yeah. But yeah, she is the last of her kind in the comics. Like she, okay. I think she always has been. Yeah. Um. The other thing, I want to say it was during the King Hippo fight. I think it was between rounds one and two. Um. You know how like they'll they'll show you like the the two characters and they'll they'll talk a little bit and it's uh-huh. usually your trainers like giving you like a very cryptic tip um i took a picture of this one because it was just that good so yeah it was it was the king hippo fight uh join the nintendo fan club today mac (laughs) (laughs) that's what my trainer told me to do okay join the nintendo fan club today did you join it no they don't even have it anymore what the hell then man but i i am not great at punch out but i'm getting better yeah, that's, that's like that with all classic games. You're never good at them when they first start, but you get better the more you play, because it's, it's the way the guy who was able to play Mario blindfolded. It's, it's all muscle memory and, and knowing, like, pattern recognition. So, it's, that's how classic video games, and that's how video games are now. It's just, as long as, if you play it enough, you'll be able to finish it without looking. Yeah, I'm trying to remember who, who I got up to. Was it Bald Bull? I think it might have been Bald Bull is where I got up to. So I think he is after, uh, what's his face? Uh, the tiger guy? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. That... I don't, I don't remember already it's... from, I've literally watched that speed run like two days ago. I don't yeah. Remember. So, so your, your second circuit, like your, yeah. um, I think it's the major maybe. Yeah. That's is, so um, oh, Don Flamenco. Uh huh. King Hippo. And I want to say Great Tiger. And then it's um bald bull. I think is the the last one. Maybe, maybe. I don't. I, I have no idea. It's been to crush that game so hard that it was like yeah. Hard to even... When somebody's good at that game, it's insane. Yeah, like he d- does not get out of the first round in any fight. Like which I don't he know. Ends how... the game every single fight on both games. He ends them in the first round. That's which stupid. I want to look up how you do that because like there are the entire minor circuit. I don't get hit at all. And, like, I hit every cue to, like, hit them as many times as I can. But I guess there's just, like, a particular, like, pattern of how you should hit them to, like, knock them out in the first round. Yeah, and, like, star punches and such. Yeah. And earning them and using them in proper timing. I forgot those were a thing, actually. Were you not using the star punches? No. Yeah, that'll. that's probably why you weren't getting out. I'm honestly not even sure how to use them. Start. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So, and also that was a thing in that dual run is there's no star punches in super punch out. There's like different punches with like X and Y or and maybe L and R. But so start just pauses that game, but does the star punch in punch out. So like to actually pause it, he would have to like double tap start and that would do the star punch and pause the uh, super punch out. Because, like, it, he would pause Super Punch-Out at times to get through fights in Punch-Out and then restart up Super Punch-Out while, like, the loading in between fights is happening and oh, doing wow. that kind of juggling. That's weird. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't pause during the fight in Punch-Out. No. Which, you know, at one point when I was playing it, like, something happened and I was trying to pay attention to two things at once and mm. I just got fucking flattened in Punch-Out. Because I, w- I want to say I was fighting Great Tiger, too. And his is a bitch anyway, because he does that teleport thing where, yep. like, he'll, like, teleport to the middle of the ring and then start doing that circle. And you have to block in, like, just the right rhythm 
And like, if you block at the right time, he gets stunned and you can punch him in the face yeah. real quick. Oh, this guy was not even, like, almost nobody was getting off their special things. Like, he wow. fucking wrecks them before they even do their shit. That's impressive. Yeah. Except, like, Bald Bull, but part of beating Bald Bull is countering his charge thing. Okay. If you hit him at the, in, when he does the, he backs up and then charges at you, it's a one hit knockdown. Oh, okay. But you have to time it perfectly. Otherwise, miss and he hits you and knocks you down. <laughs> You're tired over there, aren't you? Huh? I don't know, you just seem tired. No, I'm not tired, just... Do you not like Punch-Out? I don't, I don't have much to say about Punch-Out. I haven't played Punch-Out in forever, well, if Dude, ever. go buy a NES Classic. They're only 60 bucks. Only 60 bucks. 30 games. You get 30 games for $60. Yeah. None of these games are less than, like, 30 bucks if you go to too many games. Oh, I know. I just... I don't have the money for a NES Classic. Credit card. Give me yours. No. Mine are maxed out. Open a new one. Yeah, because that'll help me get out of debt. Yeah, you open a new one and transfer your debt to that one with a lower interest rate. I know. I, I um, need to figure stuff out. Or trade some stuff in. <laughs> like that Xbox One. <laughs> yeah, really. Trade your Xbox One in. Or that Wii U. Yeah, I'll get $5 for it. No, I think you still get like 100 for the Xbox One, maybe 120 I'd rather just have it. I don't know. Trade in Monster Hunter. No, it's, I've really <laughs> put 300 hours into the game. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you trade it in now, then, like, you can get something else. Like, you put 300 hours in. That's all you need. No. Yeah, man. There's there's new stuff coming out every, like, month, if not every two weeks right now. Well, look, you trade it in now, you you could probably get, like, 30, 40 bucks for it, I would probably think. Probably not. I, mean, I bet it's, like, I'm, 50. Sh- but no, it's probably 20 bucks. I know that, but I'm trying to, like... Talk you into I mean, there's, pro- there's probably there's probably some promo going on right now for trade ins. Well, to be honest, so I was going to say July. they that game every time there's any sort of like sale in the PSN seems to be part of the sale for like between twenty five and thirty bucks. What Monster Hunter? Yeah, okay. like I know it was just on sale for thirty bucks. Yeah, it might still be actually. And like if it was anywhere up my alley, I would have probably gotten it for for that cost. But even then, like third, like I wouldn't end up playing it, and that would just be a waste of thirty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, that's that's about it. I like I Punch Out. Punch Out's been fun. Yeah, Punch Out's fun. I just I'm not I'm no good at it. So the minor circuit is super easy. Like everyone has really obvious tells, and mo- you have more than enough time to dodge and block. I didn't even know that there was a star punch. I knew like, there was one. I completely forgot there I've, was one. Like I I never played it back when I was younger, and I don't really play it much now. Yeah, the only downside is it's not Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Yeah, it's yeah. just Punch Out. Yeah. Um. But I mean, it's it's basically the same game still. I think yeah. I think the boxing order might be a little different. No, I'm pretty sure literally the only thing they did is change Mike Tyson to Mr. Dr- well, I know in, in in certain so like the arcade release of it from like '84 is different than the console release from '87. Well, the arcade one is an entirely different game. Is so, it? Yes. It doesn't even the arcade game looks more like Super Punch Out than Punch Out Punch Out. Oh, I mean, that much I knew, but I thought the, the characters were still the same. I, I mean, I think there are some same characters, but it is not... The NES game is not, like, a port. It's a different game. Okay. I did not realize that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it, it's once you get past that minor circuit is where the, the the opponents get a little harder because they all have weird little... Rather than just, like, the tell of when to hit them, like, you have Don Flamenco. He only really attacks you if you punch him first. But because he blocks your punch that first time, you also lose, like, a stamina point. So you have to make sure to, like, kind of be on your shit when you're um, dodging him. Otherwise, you just run out of stamina super quick. And that's not fun. No, not at all. And, like, the Great Tiger's the worst. Like, he's the only one that I don't actually dislike fighting because that timing for his thing is just not cool. Yeah. Because, like, it was one of those, like, it was, like, out of, like, the... I think it took three rounds for me to knock him out. It was, like, the first round he fucking obliterated me with his special and then the second and third i managed to block it yeah but i think he hit me with it twice in the second round and the first one i blocked the second one i didn't okay so but yeah i think that's it sounds like an episode you got anything else to add mm, either of you no nope. i don't think so you guys are failures how are we failures you got nothing else to add either i'm kidding I mean, come on now i'm joking no you're not god no you're not i mean you did screw up real bad earlier i forget why 
because I started. No, why did why did why did we tell you you were fired? What did you say that was dumb? Oh, because did... I said uh, Jim Carrey's going to be Doctor Robotnik. Yeah, 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 right. Go back, go upstairs. You're fired. No, no. <laughs> no. If I'm fired, you're getting out of my house. I'm trying to. The, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so that's the show, everybody. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you want to find more of our stuff, you can head over to www.one-quest.com. You can also help us out, support us over at patreon.com slash onequest. We are on all the social medias you could ever want. We're at facebook.com slash onequest online, uh, at one underscore quest on Twitter and Instagram. YouTube channel is youtube.com slash onequest video. And all of our podcasts are basically everywhere. iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Spotify. Uh, you can go right to the site and download them, however you want to grab them. And you can... Always contact us at social at one-quest.com through the emails. Yeah. That's it. Hope everybody in America has a good July 4th celebration. And everyone everywhere else just has a good Wednesday or no. Thursday whenever this goes up. Um, no, everyone everyone else just fuck you because it's America's birthday. Okay? No. No, that's yeah, fucked no. up. No, I know. It's... You're being a dick. America sucks. I mean, like, yes, but only sometimes. Yeah. Like, we do have french fries. But they're called French. Why aren't they American? Freedom, Freedom fries. fries. So we don't have anything unique. Exactly. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.